Okay, namaste everyone. Uh, we are here to have the next uh, Nakshatra video in the series. Today is going to be Kritika. So this has taken a lot of time. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, ho hopefully what we have to say is worth uh, the wait uh, for whoever has been waiting also. So we'll start with Aditya. Aditya, you can go ahead and uh, take the lead of sorts. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. So far, so good, everyone. Enjoy the, what is that? Winter solstice is coming soon. Correct? Just, I just saw the time. It's tomorrow. Yeah, 21st, tomorrow, yeah. Because December, uh, something happened. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so 21st December, uh, 9.30, 9.40 p.m. So, central time. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Soon the year is going to end. And I wanted to do this Kritika video before this year ends, you know, at least we should have Kritika. Uh, let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Perfect. So Kritika, let's start with. So Kritika, if you see the sign or the nakshatra of Kritika falls into the Aries and the um, Taurus sign. Yeah, my uh, sound is good. Everything audible. Yeah, yeah, we can he see hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you say Kritika nakshatra, it falls in the first pada. No, every nakshatra has four padas. The first pada falls in Aries, which is the natural first house, and the last three padas falls in Taurus, which is second house. Okay. What is what is first and second house? Now, if you say first for Aries, let's consider about first house and the second house. First house is for physical body, health, for uh, forehead, brain, thoughts, interest, etc. The second house is related to wealth, family, resources, face, face. People say that uh, the face, the, appear, the whole physical body is the first house, but the face itself is the second house. Uh, taste and all those things are governed from the second house. So if you see Kritika, you can see a lot of themes related to the first and the second house. And we'll see how, as we progress how this first and the second house go ahead and we'll try to understand uh, the relationship between that. But remember, Kritika Nakshatra falls in first and second house of the Kal Purush chart. So naturally, the first and second house themes will be important. The symbol of this Nakshatra is given as a knife or a blade. Okay. Just with the symbol, you can understand what is Kritika Nakshatra will, will be. Kritika, Kritika, Kritika. The word Kritika is also critical. Critical means to cut. Now, being critical, people envy others because of being critical. But I will say, since I'm in the field of science and research, critic, being critical is very important. Uh, if someone is critical about your thoughts, your ideas, that helps us to grow, in fact. Um, you know, um, think in a different way in a much constructive manner and come up with new ideas. So crit being critical is not something that the other person is envy of you or maybe jealous of you or maybe do not like you or something. But take it in a positive way, which we generally don't take. We really take it on face value and consider that as an insult or something. But I think that should be avoided. I was also like that once upon a time. But as age grows, you know, you learn all those themes and probably I, I came to understand that being critical is not that bad. Uh, of course, the hidden motive can be different. That's up to the person. I'm mean, not saying, but just being critical is, if you just take that attitude, it's not, it's not bad. Go with that. Okay. Understand if we did not have knife or blade, what, what would our life have been? Okay. But for just from the symbol, you can understand how this natives will be. It may be him, they may be very critical. Uh, they may cut your thoughts, cut your ideas, cut your you know, speech, something like that. And when that happens, understand that there is some Kritika theme playing there. Okay. Now, where is Kritika lying? As I said, the first, the last Pada of Aries and the first three Padas of Taurus. So it spans from the range of 26 degrees, 40 minutes of Aries till Taurus, 10 degrees. Okay. 
if you see annually when the sun transits uh, during this or during this uh, part of the zodiac, it is from every time from 10th May to 24th May, around that part, around that you know, uh, time of the year, the sun is in Kritika Nakshatra from 10th May to 24th May. Okay, fine. Since being an astronomer, how we can neglect stars, Kritika is Kritika Nakshatra is in, in, in English, it is called Pleiades. Pleiades constellation. In fact, in astronomy, Pleiades is an open star cluster. Okay, there are different star, of course, the word cluster, you know, star clusters, clusters of stars. There are two types of clusters generally in astronomy. One is the globular clusters, which is like gravitationally bound, very spherical. And then there is open clusters spread apart. Okay, globular clusters, they are gravitationally bound. They are like, they are, they are globules, like a globule, like a ball. And Kritika is basically an open cluster. You cannot see a particular shape. You cannot see a spherical shape. When you look at the Kritika nakshatra, even through a telescope, you will see like there are some stars and spread apart. And if you see through a telescope, there are six. Some people say there are six main stars. Some people, they say there are seven main stars. There are six main stars you can see. Let's go with the analogy of mythology. There are six main stars you can see of the uh, Kritika Nakshatra and each star has got its own, its own names, Elcyon and uh, Merope and all those different names come. Anyway, uh, this is not an astronomy class. I won't go deep into that. And there are many aspects of it. It's a very, uh, these stars are very hot, radiates, uh, very high radiates, very hot. Again, you see the concept of, which I'm going to soon introduce the concept of fire. The concept of Agni comes into the picture, which is nothing but the deity of Kritika actually. And you could see a reflection nebula, a blue reflection nebula, in fact. But sorry, I'm going to technicality. Let's come back to astronomy rather than astronomy. But very hot stars, actually. Okay. And it's a star cluster system. This is an Aries uh, sign here. You will see a, you can see a Kritika Nakshatra even from your naked eye, where you will see some patch of, uh, some some group of some stars on a clear moonless night if you go to a much uh, less light pollution and all you could be able to see some uh, like a very fuzzy patch or something like 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 very far away some stars okay and remember uh, again i'm on one more astronomical concept it's a very young stellar young age stellar cluster in fact because globular clusters can be very old this is an open cluster which is not much it's just 100 million years old in fact that's the age of this cluster astronomically, which is very new compared to the other star clusters which we have in the sky. So it's a very young star cluster. This is the Aries, Alpha, Beta, you are Hamal and Sheraton, which is Ashwini Nakshatra. Then you have Barni and then comes Kritika where you see those, these are the stars, group of stars located there. And this is a Taurus constellation here. So just at the end of the Aries and beginning of Taurus, you will have those. The main Yogatara of Kritika is Alcyon and that happens at around 6 degree 9 minutes of Taurus. Okay, so remember Kritika Nakshatra spans from 26 degree 40 minutes of Aries to 10 degrees of Taurus and you have this star at 6 degree 9 minutes. If you see those, uh, our vernal equinox position, we know that vernal equinox position is basically moving backward at today, it is in the Uttar Bhadra Pada Nakshatra uh, Pada 1. But if you trace back and it is moving backward, and if you see, if you calculate when the vernal equinox was in Kritika Nakshatra, it was around the time of 1600 to 2600 BCE, before Common Era. So 1600 to 2600, plus if you add 2000 years more, even from 2600, because now it is 2023, around about about. 4,000, uh, 4,600 or 3,600, around 4,000 years back from today, you have the vernal equinox in Kritika. What was that time during that time? Uh, of course, the Harappan period or the Indus Valley, the peak of the Indus Valley civilization was during that time. Okay. There's a whole lot of talk thing I can talk about, like you can understand if the vernal equinox goes from each nakshatra, uh, how the things 
in the society change on a larger basis in a around a thousand year cycle because you know 27 nakshatras the vernal equinox takes 26000 years so that means each nakshatra will have thousand years uh, the vernal equinox transits through each nakshatra in thousand years so when kritika nakshatra was going through your uh, uh, or when vernal equinox was going through kritika nakshatra we had the peak of indus valley civilization and remember indus valley civilization what it is known for it is known for its it was a very advanced civilization it was we have the seals we have the pottery we have those uh, terracotta images um, baked bricks you know baking bricks are no remember it's 5000 years old technique even the bricks were baked at that time baking the bricks baking means what again the concept of fire they know about the concept of fire so again fire element is there what was the main uh, society uh, time during that time uh, when 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 this civilization was going through uh, growing crops crops means what food food is connected to what house second house again so all the themes of second house you can see during that time uh, and even in, and that is very evident that even in the seals they have such animals printed you know and this is the uh, script of the indus valley which is still a mystery which we don't know uh, what it is uh, yet uh, but some pictures of animals are coming into there some 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 uh, growth agriculture theme baked bricks theme and you see here there are some toys looks like some bullock cart or something you know, there is like a wheel and someone is driving a bullock cart with some pot in, the, in that bullock cart so you can understand uh, very much very much life is very much similar to what we see in our normal villages in india I don't know now, villages are also getting extinct these days. Uh, but uh, bullock cart, having animals, you know, potteries and all those things. So very advanced civilization which trace, even, even that traces of it can be even seen today after 4,000 years later. Uh, this is one of the famous sculpture from the Indus Valley civilization. Is some noble man, maybe some high class priest or something. Uh, so there you could see high class priest. So they know about, about uh, something about religion also during those times. Okay. This is another famous uh, thing which we see. Um, if you ask what is this, this is some you know, script here of Indus Valley. But you can see some animals here. One, two, three, four, some animals. And then, then you see this person who is doing sitting in some posture. Many people say that it's the image of Lord Shiva. Uh, image of Pashupati Nath. Pashupati Nath. Pashu means animals, Pati, lord of animals. Pashupati Nath thing. Some people say that it is something different. Horn god or something. I don't know. You can see it's very, very big horns it has got. But again, the concept of money, you know, uh, because that was again a barter system there, exchange, money. But again, they're all related to second house themes, you can see. Uh, animals growing crops uh, and this seal is about 2000 bc from 2350 bc exactly during that time of uh, when when the vernal equinox was in kritika nakshatra which i said it was between 1600 to 2600 bc so very 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 much into that era shiva was even known then uh, remember the other thing which you say when Rigveda was composed or Rigveda was uh, written, uh, controversies again exist there. Scholars believe around 1500 to 1000 BC. If you want to take a more conservative dates, it is around 1900 to 1200 BC. So that means Rigveda was composed during a time, if, if we believe this, subjected to whatever uh, you know, controversies that's there in the society right now. But when Kritika Nakshatra was in... <laughs> So when Vernal Equinox was in Kritika Nakshatra, you can say that the Rig Veda was composed during that time. And if you read Rig Veda, if some, um, some of you have gone through that, there are a lot of hymns dedicated to Lord Indra and the next is for Agni. Indra and Agni are the main gods there. These two are the main gods because I don't know why you can say that that's an agriculture. So Rainfall is very important to them. <laughs> uh, we don't know. Um, and at the same time, 
Indra is considered as one the hero in the in Rig Veda. Uh, okay. The next uh, hymns is for um, lot many hymns dedicated to Agni. So definitely Agni and Indra were the two main gods uh, of during the Vedic period. Okay. And remember, maybe maybe I attribute this to Varnali Kinos passing through the Kritika Nakshatra. The Lord is Agni. Um, can be one of the reasons why it is people consider the importance of Agni and the fire element and all those things. Okay. And uh, it's a very strange that even uh, they understood the, understood the importance of water, the rainfall. And it was said that the Indra is the one who brings them the rainfall. Interestingly, what we see during the time of when around 5,000, 10,000 years, 10,000 years back, it was end of ice age. So ice age came to an end, uh, temperature of the earth increased and all the things which were in the form of snow got melted and the water came down. You know, they all mel melted and the water and you have river systems and all and that can be used for doing agriculture. So it was said that this Indra goes and you know, brings the rainfall. And uh, another story is we know about Vrittasur. If you remember, he was blocking that uh, all water and Indra goes and kills Vrittasur and releases all the water. And interestingly, that's the end of Ice Age too. And uh, the water is coming, the Ice Age ended, temperature increased, water melted, came in the form of rivers and all, and then people could use that for uh, irrigation and other purposes for agriculture. So that's why they considered Indra as one of the heroes in Rig Veda. And many hymns were dedicated to uh, Lord Indra. You also see the importance of Indra in uh, in Mahabharata. If you if you remember, um, um, I think there was this Govardhan scenario, correct? When 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 in uh, Gokul, when everyone was uh, uh, supposed to pray Indra, uh, Lord Krishna says that why are you praying to Indra? We should pray to Govardhan and all. And uh, that scenario is very. A great that Lord Indra got angry, he started, he made the rainfall and then Lord Krishna lifted the Govardhan with his one finger and then everybody took shelter beneath Govardhan. So, uh, of course, Indra was defeated at that time. But you can see again that in the society of during that time, um, how much importance was given to Indra. Remember, when Mahabharata happened, Again, there's a controversy for the dates. But when Mahabharata happened, maybe in the next Nakshatra video of Rohini, we will see that the Varna Nikinox was in Rohini again. Okay. Um, if you go thousand years back. So that's the time when um, uh, Varna Nikinox was transiting Rohini. Mahabharata may have occurred. That's that's what the current scenario or current dates look like. But again with Agni, we have a lot of... Uh, again with Indra, we have a lot of importance given to Agni. Okay, who is nothing but the deity of uh, Kritika Nakshatra. So Agni, Angiras is the father of Agni. Okay, um, I'm just giving the family bio, what family bio data of Agni, son of the Aus and Prithvi, and also sometimes it is called son of Brahma. Agni's concert is Swaha. You know, we always when we put oblations into the fire, we always call it Swaha. Okay, Swaha is the consort of Agni. Agni has got uh, Pavaka, and there are not only one consort, Agni has got many wives, Pavaka, Pavaman, Suchi, Nila, Agnea, all those are different names of Agni. Okay, requires love and affection to sustain, of course. Now, you have to sustain the Agni, sustain the fire, you have to put input oblations to it, give, give, give food to it. Okay, <clears throat> if and if it is Agni is too strong, what it can do? It can also burn everything. It can also kill you also. Okay. So Agni can be used in two very, two different forms. One, we know, we use Agni daily. Agni is inside us too. We need fire basically to digest our food. Okay. What happens when we eat food? Hydrochloric acid and then that's what is needed. Uh, Agneshe, 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 that's one organ. I don't remember. Maybe Pittashe, Agneshe and all those things are the elements which we also have in our body to give the fire. Okay, when the fire, so we need fire to digest our food. When the fire, go, but, but when the fire element is high, our temperature of the body also becomes high during fever time and then you're on the bed. So balance of fire element is required. A balance of everything is required. That's what the life is. Similarly, Agni, when it is balanced, you can 
it's very good you can use it for some constructive purpose baking bricks making food all those things protection we use we used agni for protecting from other wild animals but at the same time agni when it becomes too ferocious it can also destroy you it can also kill you it can also burn you okay so agni has got two forms one sustenance and it can be used in a very positive ways another it can even destroy you okay now what is agni agni dev is considered as nothing but a mediator between humans and gods whatever you put offerings into the fire agni dev consumes it and then or agni dev takes it and then gives it to the god so it is he is the, like a postman taking all the oblations from you and giving it to the higher realms or to the to the higher gods so he is like a messenger taking all your offerings and all and giving it to the higher world so he is like a mediator in between all these things can be it, why am i saying this is you can understand the nature of kritika natives through all these qualities like for example mediator now what can you understand with this quality of agni with the kritika nakshatra native kritika nakshatra native can be i have seen in many ways uh, they can be very good in uh, in connecting people in connecting two different groups probably because agni is a mediator between the human level and the god level so this this people can be a mediator between humans uh, between two teams collaboration between two teams maybe we can be a link between them so some role they can play like that okay uh requires love and affection to sustain that means what if you don't put uh, things in the fire it will the fire will go out so same thing here they these people may be require love and affection a lot again taurus rashi and all you can see those things so or if it is not given to them uh, all those proper nourishment or no thing then they may have some psychological problem or some problem some issues they may have okay and these people can uh, be in a we have two different ways probably also like when used in a proper way they can flourish and they can be good for society but if not they can be destroying everything and maybe destroy his own creator also that's what correct agni has the potential to burn the other people like his own creator who made fire and if you are not careful it can burn that person who created the agni so same thing can happen with these people too so that's what kritika nakshatra natives are something like that okay and as i said this indra and agni there are many hymns given in rigveda so you can understand their importance of agni now i want to give you this the the, the directions uh, we have all the 10 directions because dasho disha we say dasho disha dash dasho means 10 directions what are the 10 directions east west south north okay so that is your four then you have in between northeast northwest southeast southwest so now four plus four makes eight and then you also have another two direction one is up and one is below so there are 10 directions basically dasho disha and all 10 directions east west south north and then you have northeast northwest southeast southwest so that makes eight and then up and below now each direction has given to some particular deity like for example east which is called purva disha in hindi east is the lord is indra now remember indra is a uh, deity of jeshtha nakshatra we know that west is given the deity of western direction is varuna who is the lord of satavisha nakshatra who is the deity of satavisha uttar nakshatra or the north direction is given to kubera now kubera is we don't have anything uh, like kubera as a deity in the nakshatra system if you go to south we have yama of course the lord is yama and yama is the deity of bharni nakshatra agneya now is that is south east south east is called as agneya agne again agni comes from the word agni agneya direction agni agni is, is the deity of kritika northwest is called as vayavya okay vayavya vayu so vayu is the lord of uh, northwest direction vayu is the lord of the deity of swati nakshatra southwest is called as nerutya nerutya direction comes from the, and you can see see how these names are very much very similar to the deity names nerutya nirutti lord of mula nakshatra 
the deity of Mula Nakshatra. Ishanya. Ishanya means east northeast direction. Ishan direction is given as Rudra. Okay. Rudra, <coughs> Ardra. You can say something like Ardra Nakshatra, something. Vishnu is given as a zenith, which is a top direction. And we know Vishnu is the deity of Shravana Nakshatra. Brahma, the below direction, is given as Nadir. Okay. And, and that is basically uh, the bottom. And uh, Brahma is the deity of uh, Rohini Nakshatra. So you can see that all the directions, the deities of these directions are connected to the deities of Nakshatras also. All like Brahma, Vishnu, they have Ishan Rudra. If you say Ishan as Rudra, probably you can say it's an Ardra, Mula, Swati, Kritika, Barni. Only Kubera, I don't know Kubera. Um, what what direct? Uh, there's no Nakshatra given to Kubera, but all this uh, deities of the uh, directions are assigned some deity of Nakshatra. Uh, potentially, for Kubera could be Uttarashada, right? That's the Mangos Nakshatra. That could Possible. be one potential. Yeah. Possible. Possible. Yeah, but... I've not done much research on these nakshatras, right. how it stands here, but you can think of something. It's very interesting to see that all the directions, the Lord is connected with some nakshatra. Yeah, you can say Kubera with Uttarashana. Maybe Abhijit. That's why the nakshatra is gone. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Possible. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Okay. Now, Agni has got various names. If you see, it's called Pavaka, sanctifier of everything. See, to understand Nakshatra, <coughs> natives of Nakshatra, understanding the deity, it's 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 one of the big things. And many qualities of that understanding the deity can give you the a good understanding of Nakshatras also. And how to understand the qualities of the deity through by their own names, you can understand. Like Pavaka, there's another name of uh, Agni Pavaka, who is a sanctifier of everything. He sanctifies, he purifies. Okay. Havya Vahana, one who carries five, carries the sacrificial butter. Because what do you do when you put in Agni in, in Yadnya and all? You put you put uh, fire, or you put butter, you put ghee. Okay. So he carries that ghee and gives it to the God. So one who carries the butter, Havya Vahana. Then you have Sapta Jeevi. Sapta Jeevi means Sapta means seven. Jeva means tongue. So he has got seven tongues. And then they say that Agni takes the ghee from the seven, from his seven tongues. Okay. So again, seven, the number seven is coming. And there will be something which I will talk about, Kritika Nakshatra, also, the seven stars and all those things later. Vahani traveling with wind. Anala is one of the Vasus. Utashna, nothing, I don't know what is the meaning of that. Chitra Bahanu, Chitra Bahanu, Kal means colorful light. Jvalana, Jwala. Jwala, it's like glowing. Okay, Vaisvanara, Vibhavasu, whose light is wealth. Dhumaketu, one is crowned with smoke. And there are many names like Sikhi, Pingesha, Plavanga, Bhuriteja, Rudragarva, Hiranyakrit. So there are several names of Agni. So again, all these names, you can see it in the Rigveda. So all these names comes it in the Rigvedic text. Okay, anyway, there's a lot of Agnis. Let's understand the story of Agni, that will give you some qualities of Agni Dev and that will also tell you some qualities of Kritika Nakshat natives too. So we see this Great Bear constellation, very famous constellation, probably everywhere in the world people don't know. It's the Great Bear constellation in Western world as it is called Great Bear. But when you go in India, it is called Saptarishi Mandal, Saptarishi. And there are Saptarishi, seven rishis. And the names are given, different names, Western... In Western uh, world, it is given different name, but in India, you go, it's called seven rishis. So, given the names of seven sages, Kratu, Pulaha, Pulatsya, Tri, Angiras, Vasishta, and Marichi. Okay. So, these are all seven rishis. You know, if anyone, if you know Pulastya, Pulastya is actually the father's father of Ravan, is Pulastya. Okay. So, Pulastya is the grandfather of our Mr. Ravan, or Dr. Ravan, you can say him. Okay. So, uh, Vasishta and Arundhati. Very famous. Um, Angiras, uh, father of uh, probably, I guess, Jupiter. Angiras. Okay. So these, there are seven rishis. Uh, and it is said that the seven rishis, Agni comes to um, uh, the seven rishis. And what happens is, 
one day it seems that the seven rishis uh, um, had gone to fetch water or take a bath somewhere, you know, outside in the lake or a pond. I don't know whether they had gone to take bath or whether they had gone for, to fetch water or something. And Agni is very having a flirtatious nature. And what he does, he, you know, he was flirting with the wives. And then what happens? Um, later, the sages came, comes to know that uh, Agni is flirting with the wives. And um, I don't know whether the wives flirted or not, but whatever it is, uh, the story. And then they abandoned uh, their wife. But out of the seven rishis, of course, they are having seven wives too. The one wife comes back okay, to the sages and the six other wives stayed there. So the one wife which comes back is actually the wife of Vashishta, which is Arundhati. So Arundhati comes back and the six of her, the sages' wives are flirting with Agni and the sages curse them or something and then they abandon them and these are the six wives that forms the Pleiades or the Kritika Nakshatra. So that's the story. Okay. And the wife who comes back, here in the picture it is, uh, Vashishta and Arundhati comes back. Okay. So even today, in many uh, in many uh, Indian cultures, uh, during marriage ceremony, um, it's there in my custom, in fact. In, in my custom, they show that uh, after the marriage is done, uh, the priest takes us outside and then they show us this star, this Vasishta star. Okay. And if you see, and then you know, some offerings, I, I still remember in my community, they, they we had to offer rice and all something to that. And it's like an oblations and all those. And the priest does that. Um, and uh, take blessings from this uh, Vasishta and Arundhati. Now, message is basically... Uh, and if you clearly see from a telescope, it's a very, it's a binary star system. If you see from the telescope, you can see this star, the Mizar. It is called as the Mizar and Alcor in the Western world. Mizar is Vashishta and Alcor is a very small dim star, uh, very next to the uh, Mizar. Uh, once upon a time, this was used as if you our eyesight is good or not, they will use this star. If you could see that star as two different stars, then your eyesight is good. Now, of course, that cannot be taken as a standard test uh, because of light pollution and all these days and you can't see properly, but that was a test before to whether you have a good eyesight or not. And um, anyway, so, so so this was known, well-known custom in India to show this Vasisht and Arundhati. And clearly from telescope, you could see that binary stars. And even with naked eye, if you have good naked eye, good sky conditions and all those, you can see that as a two different stars. But I have never seen that as two different stars. From through telescope, I have seen it definitely, but there are two stars. But the but it's so interesting that the priest will tell you about those. He will pay oblations and he will tell the husband and the wife that as Vasishta and Arundhati are together, and Arundhati did not leave Vasishta, you should you both also should not leave, and you both should be together, and you both should you know be share your world happiness and sadness and maintain all your family life and blah blah all those things they will say. So that's the message basically the priest says showing this Vasishta star. Um, and interestingly, there is also a scientific evidence that these stars are basically a binary stars. Okay. So that's the story. And that's how this Kritika Nakshatra got formed. And that's why we see all those six stars uh, of Kritika Nakshatra. I don't know, one, two, three, maybe four, five. I don't know which stars you can say, but yeah. yeah. The six stars of uh, Kritika Nakshatra is formed. Okay, fine. So now, especially after that... Uh... But say after that marriage ritual, then you're stuck with that uh, person also, whether you like it or not. Because <laughs> it's like, what is that aggressive? Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Now, so last Kartikeya story is connected with Kritika Nakshatra. Now, what is the story of Kartikeya? We have this de demon called Tarkasur. If you know, now, this is the demon Tarkasur, and he had a blessing. The blessing was Tarkasur can only be killed uh, from the uh, offspring of Shiva and Parvati. That was the boon given to him because he was well, not the boon. He was asking Brahma the immortality boon. Brahma was not giving him. And then he said, okay, give, ask me something else because you have to die one day. And then he said, okay, let me die with the hands of son of Shiva and Parvati. Because uh, the story is like Shiva after Sati, Sati got, uh, you know, burnt herself in the fire. Shiva became almost like a recluse and Shiva was disinterested in family affairs and all. 
So it was like, okay, where Shiva will make a family and where Shiva will reproduce and all those things and it's not going to happen. So Tarkasu said, I will say in such a way, I will trick Brahma and, if, and uh, anyway, Shiva is not going to have son in any way as a physical son. So he asked that, uh, let me be killed by the son of Shiva and Parvati. And he was thinking that they are not going to have any children. So I will be, I am almost like immortal. Okay. So, but later, as we know, uh, the efforts of Kamadeva and all, like how he has to go and create the uh, love in the mind of Shiva. And he got burnt. The story of uh, uh, immolation or not the burning of uh, uh, Lord Kamadeva. And, uh, but finally, uh, Shiva and Parvati did produce uh, this child, uh, Kartikeya. But people knew at the time that if Kartikeya, if Tarkasur comes to know, then he's going to go behind this child and kill him and, you know, and uh, cause some harm. So what he, they did was, uh, he, they take this child, uh, this small young child, Kartikeya, to the uh, Pleiades constellation, where there are the six wives of, uh, say, our sages. And it is these six wives who takes the care of uh, Kartikeya. And Kartikeya grew there. And uh, I think these were the six mothers, foster mother of Lord Kartikeya. And uh, also remember, Kartikeya is also called Shan Muga. Shan Muga means six face. Shan, six, Muga, Mukham means face, six face. Because he wanted to see the six mothers at one go, you know. Every mother wanted to see him. So he developed the six face so that he can... Each one of his face will be uh, with one of the mother. So Lord Kartikeya grew under the care of Pleiades constellation. So Kartikeya and Kritika Nakshatra, there is some connection there. And then finally Kartikeya grew up and then when he became a young boy, then finally uh, he was able, now he, he was a very warrior type and he finally killed Tarkasur. That's the story. But to protect him from the danger of Tarkasur, he was taken from his biological parents and then he grew up in uh, the midst of uh, Pleiades nakshatra or the Kritika nakshatra. Hence the name Kartikeya comes. From the word Kritika comes the word Kartikeya. Now with this, all these stories which I have said about Agni, with this, what we understand, see, what was Kartikeya born for? Kartikeya born, was born to kill Tarkasu. There is some aim for them. So these natives are born for some purpose in their life. Some, some purpose which they maybe have been unfulfilled in the previous life. Kartikeya was taken away from his biological parents and then he grew up in uh, in the midst of uh, Kritika or Nakshatra or the wives of uh, those six sages. So people of Kritika Nakshatra may have some abandonment issues maybe. They may be separated from their parents either physically or mentally or they may be living far, maybe they may be living. There are so many times I've seen Kritika Nakshatra people, uh, they said that, oh, I was living with my grandparents, my 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 mother and father were in a different city my father had a job he always has to transfer and something so i was staying with my grandparents most of that like i i know some few friends of mine who said that one of my other friend who had a kritika a prominent kritika is uh both of his parents um, died at a very early age so he was without parents and then his uncle took care of him so there is some abandonment issues i've seen with kritika nakshatra strongly um, in some cases, I've seen that uh, the, I, either the mother dies early or the father dying early. That also I have seen. Yeah, these are some of my, I'm remembering some of my friends' uh, horoscope right now and thinking from that. So there is some abandonment issue. Either they may be separated physically. If, if not, it's not that their parents will always die, but can be separated because of some posting of their father or something. You know, they are always far away. Not always, but they can be far away. Even if they are together, Either mentally their thoughts may not match. So that also is one thing. Agni, as we know, it's a deity. So it has got, it It eats or it. you have to give butter or you have to give uh, ghee in the fire. So it is a voracious eater. So Kritika uh, Nakshatra, I've seen people with good appetite also. I've seen that. Uh, <laughs> remembering few friends of mine. Okay. Voracious eater. A fire element is prominent. Uh, so that's why See, it's nothing wrong. Okay. They are element. The digestion power is maybe much, may many, much stronger. So probably they feel more hungry. Um, now, the the symbol of this nakshatra is, as I said, is blade or the scissor or, or basically the, the knife. So very skillful in cutting. Okay. Uh, 
I've seen some of the natives of Kritika. Like if you give them a cut, even to cut an um, onion, oh, they cut it like, no, it takes, takes such a long time. I'm like, my oil is getting heated up and all. And this fellow will just cut like taking its own time and cutting with nice cubes. I said, do it fast. <laughs> Ready to prepare food and all. Like back in the days when we have friends and all living together and making food. Uh, I have this one who was Kritika guy. And I will be like, okay, I'm putting or making it ready and ask him to cut onions. And he will be like, slowly, nicely, as if it takes such a long time. He said, if you take such a long time, how can we do? And I have like cut fast and then put it. But but they have a very skillful style of cutting uh, things and even vegetable cutting. You see the, you give a, a vegetable cutting for a Kritika Nakshatra native and you will see their abilities uh, or with knife and all. Artistic nature again. Again, as I said, Agni was mediator between the team. So it's like between human and God. So they can be again a mediator. Uh, Agni is a voracious eater. So these people may be having some dealing with some nourishment. No, Agni has to be nourished. To, to sustain Agni, you have to put uh, um, oblations or your offerings there. Then only the Agni survives. So it's like a, something related to maybe dietitian, especially, or nourishment industry these people can, uh, can be seen into. Good for them. Kritika Nakshar Kassis, characteristics is a star of fire. The power is to burn and purify. Basis above is to give heat. Basis below is light. To be the eater for the foods of the gods. The power of this nakshatra is called Dahana Shakti. Power to burn and purify. And result of Shakti basis and desire is burning or purification. So there is some purification. There is some burning element, purification element, consumption element, nourishment element with this. The Purusharth is Kama. It's a Dev uh, Rakshat Gana Nakshatra. Trimurti is Shiva. Animal is the female goat and the bird symbol is peacock. So again, you can see this Trimurti Shiva concept, Kama, Purusharth Kama. So it's an Agni burning. So a lot of destructions can also be seen with this nakshatra. The tree associated with this nakshatra is the cluster fig tree. Okay. The cluster fig tree is the nakshatra uh, tree for this uh, Kritika. Fig trees, very good. Importance of fig trees are digestive health. Again, digestion. Agni coming into the picture. Lower cholesterol levels, heart health, diabetes, solution for diabetes, increased bone density, hair and skin issues. It can be impossible. Uh, importance of the fig tree. Again, one of my favorite things, if you want to understand the Kritika Nakshatra, as I said, take the first pada, comes under A, please. So if I take Kritika Nakshatra, the four padas of Kritika Nakshatra falls into Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. The first pada falls into Aries nakshatra. So that's why it is mass. Nakshatra lord Kritika is the sun is the lord of Kritika nakshatra. So that's why I have put nakshatra lord as sun throughout. Since the first pada is Sagittarius, its lord is Jupiter. Second pada is Capricorn. So Saturn. Third pada is Aquarius. So again Saturn. Fourth pada is again Pisces. So comes Jupiter. And the second, third pada, the Rashi is Taurus. So that's why Venus. So if you see this chart, the first pada has got importance of Mars and Jupiter. The second pada, Venus and Saturn. Third pada also Venus and Saturn. Fourth pada is Venus and Jupiter. So a lot of energies related to sun, definitely, because it is the Kritika Nakshatra. And then Venus comes into the picture with, of course, depending upon what pada, you will get Saturn energies, Jupiter energies, Martian energies. What is sun? Sun is nothing but governor, management, independent nature. Venus, again, Venus is a lot of knowledge, partners, sexual nature, you know, Agni, flirtatious nature, second house. Now, if I ask you what is, which planet exiles in the Taurus sign, it's very clear. You may say that well, moon, correct? Moon exiles at what degree? Three degree of Taurus that comes under Kritika nakshatra. So moon exiles in this nakshatra. So there's also something seen, special position of moon is in this nakshatra too. The female goat, animal symbol of Kritika Nakshatra. Goat, again, what is goat used for? Goat can be used for their milk products, goat cheese, goat milk. Uh, goat can be also be used for you no know, meat, very famous, mutton. So mutton or meat or, or milk, cheese, what, what all these things you can think of? Nourishment again, feeding, second house connection. So definitely second house connection themes with Kritika Nakshatra. And as I said, moon exiles in the Kritika nakshatra, so resources and all. Now again, some 
individuals where we see this Kritika nakshatra. This is Albrecht von Graf, he's an ophthalmologist. And you can see uh, uh, it's Kritika Ketu, uh, Sun and Mercury both are in Kritika nakshatra um, in the 10th house. And uh, he, of course, studied philosophy, logic, natural science, treatment of uh, eyes and all. Again, eyes, second house. Eye disorders, correct? Because second house is again related to your eyes. Optics. So a lot of Kritika themes with this person. He also designed a knife which is called a graph, graph knife for cataract surgery. Because what is knife? Again, symbol of Kritika nakshatra is knife. So you, you can clearly see how the themes of Kritika nakshatra is playing in this uh, guy's um, chart. Where he has got two planets in Kritika. In fact, I did show his chart somewhere in for Ashwini nakshatra also. But... You can see for again, very much prominently seen, the themes are matching with Kritika Nakshatra thing too. Okay, and he de developed this instrument uh, for surgery and all those things. Uh, old guy, 1828 person, but he was the one who developed this special knife for surgery. Kritika themes, cutting, surgery. Ambedkar Sahab, our Mercury uh, is in the Bharni Nakshatra and uh, with a law and justice minister in the first. But again, you can see uh, mass is in Kritika. Now, I, I need to highlight this as mass in Kritika. What did, what did, if you see um, our uh, uh, Shanmuga or the Lord Kartikya, he fought with Tarkasura and he, he freed all other gods, correct? So, you can see that the themes of Kritika Nakshatra is for fighting for others. Similarly, Dr. Ambedkar, fighting for people who were, you know, uh, for Dalits and all those things, and then made a, a whole, he's still revered a lot in, especially in Maharashtra, Mumbai, and all those areas. Ambedkar is very much revered, um, with a very high, you know, people give a lot of uh, respect to him. Mass is in Kritika. Mass, again, warrior. So you can see that how this nakshatra is fighting for other people's rights, just as their theme of Kartikeya. Now this guy, um, Gillette. Now don't get confused with that Gillette. This also guy actually developed this, you know, your shaving, our shaving blades. So um, King Cam Gillette, who was an American businessman who invented a best-selling safety razor. Gillette's innovation was the thin, inexpensive, disposable blade of stamped steel. Okay. Now, Gillette is often erroneously credited with the so-called raisin and business model. It was later that company made and then I think for his honor that company was given that name. But he was not the one who developed, but he gave that idea and later the another the real company took it but gave the name as Gillette, something like that. But if you see again, Rahu in Kritika for this guy. Okay. We don't know the time. We know his birth date. So, I just put a time 10 a.m. So, Lagna may be a little bit off. It can be anything, but at least Rahu will not change its position. So Rahu is in Kritika Nakshatra, inventing blades again. See, uh, I think the most uh, which I enjoy making slides in this Nakshatra video is this part. Here I just tell in five minutes, but to make these slides, I have to think and I have to go back and I have to see. And there are like, this part takes the longest time. But I learned so much from this, I was not knowing about this. And it's... Uh, um, other things are all like you know uh, it's a textbook material type but then this when it comes okay that makes sense why he's and many times it will come very easy to me but this time for Kritika it was not that coming but I learned a lot too and I will let let I will, I will tell you what it is in the coming slides maybe in maybe the next slide so I said okay if that guy guys makes uh, if that guy makes the Gillette blade uh, I should also Swiss knife knife let's see who invented the Swiss knife and then I come up with this guy, Carl Elsner, and then I see his chart, but his chart has no Kritika. And I was like, what is that? And in many charts I came across where I saw, uh, I thought that this looks like a Kritika theme, but the Kritika themes of Kritika, may I don't know if they are Navamsha and all those things, so forget about that. Um, of course, I can calculate Navamsha from other planets, not with Moon and Lagna, but they can do for other planets. But then what I saw in the research, uh, when I was doing this, I, I I thought that this may look, sounds like a Kritika, but it won't be Kritika. It comes a lot of with Chitra and Vishaka Nakshatra. Again, remember Vishaka is what? The date is Indra Agni. Indra and Agni. Agni also comes there. 
Chitra so and Chitra is you not know, divine making making uh, Chitra the Lord is Vishwakarma making weapons making all those instruments. So not only with this chart there are two three examples that came in uh, which I have not discussed here which I thought that this will be like looks like a Kritika theme but then it will be more like Chitra Nakshatra or Vishaka Nakshatra. Yeah, now there's I... a there's a difference though. No, I'm just saying adding what you said like maybe the knife before was like for the surgery knife was for the face. This knife mm -hmm. is more like a utility knife and all that. So it's like Chitra Vishaka makes sense for perhaps that way. Correct. Yeah. Can yeah. be. And what I thought Sandeep was, maybe they can be good collaborators. When you talk about Kritika Nakshatra, maybe they can be good collaborators with Vishaka people. They can be good collaborators with Chitra. Because what will these people do? Vishaka is Indragni again. So it makes sense. Chitra will utilize their energy to make some instruments and all. And then come up with some innovative idea. So if you have a Kritika Nakshatra, anyone with Kritika Nakshatra native, they should go and maybe collaborate with some Vishaka Nakshatra native or a Chitra Nakshatra native and their ideas can be exchanged to make something new and innovation. So I was thinking good collaborations can happen to them. Yeah, so that was my point, maybe, maybe. Uh, because Kritika will have its own energy, Vishaka Nakshatra will have its own innovative energy, Chitra Nakshatra, and then combining them may can a good uh, outcome may result in. And as you said, that that can also be true. But or, this yeah. is not uh, critical, but I just wanted to highlight that as a research point. You know, interesting because uh, if Indragni is also considered, maybe mm -hmm. you could say uh, they might be good collaborators with Jeshta people also because it's Jeshta Indra also. Jeshta Indra yeah, also, yes. Thing. Yeah, that's a good point actually. The other thing was, you know, I was a lot of, then I said Kritika Agni, so a lot of chef, you know, chef, that come also comes. But when I see chef, everyone was more again Vishaka. Our, who is that? Uh, Gordon Ramsay? Uh, like a lot of, lot of chefs, like two, three I saw. And then it was like, oh, maybe with fire and all. But uh, they came up with a lot with Vishaka natives again. So that was something which I saw. And it was very interesting to see that actually. So this, that's why I say this part of when I make people, that's the most interesting part for me. It takes a long time. To research and all those, but uh, that's this is the most fun part of, of the slides actually. As as a researcher, I learn many things from in this section when I do it. Okay, very strange. Uh, the Great Fire of New York again. Fire. When I was looking, there was like seven fire. I I had some slides later which I did not put it here now, but I was looking. There was seven. I just saw what are the great fires and then this uh, great fire of New York came in and Rahu in Kritika, Sun and Mars in Mula. Again, I'm, I'm going deviating again and again from the point. When I see this, this destruction themes and all, Mula Nakshatra also comes a lot into picture. Okay, that's, I've seen again, like you go and see um, uh, 6 December 92, uh, that uh, Masjid demolition and all, again, Mula Nakshatra will, there is this lot of significance. You see it at our 20, what is that? Um, uh, tsunami, 20, what was that? 26th uh, December 2004, Mula Nakshatra coming into picture. Um, so did destruction some Mula Nakshatra? And I did some research. I'm not going to talk any more detail because going off the point. I have some slides later, but let me stick to the point. Again, Ravin, Kritika, Sun and Mars in Mula. Makes sense. Great fire, fire of New York, which happened in December 16, 1835. Time unknown, but... At least we know the positions here. Oppenheimer. Again, bomb. Explosion. All those. But he has Mercury in Kritika. Came up with that idea. Mercury thoughts, calculation. You know, if you have seen the movie, Oppenheimer movie, which got released just a few months back, um, I was very thrilled to see because I saw many physics equations there. of my, And it, it reminded me of my electrodynamics class there. which, <laughs> Or in the movie, they showed all those. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, Mercury in Kritika, Mercury again thoughts, you know, make, where did he put his thoughts? Making Agni, making an atom bomb. What is atom bomb? Again, a big, huge form of Agni. Um, calculations in making uh, atom bomb or Agni things. So Oppenheimer. What festivals now? That's another part. This is also another part which I enjoy. This human and this part is my favorite part. Uh, we said that Kritika goes from 26 degree 40 to 10 degree of, uh, I should put here, uh, to Taurus 10 degree. So this is 10 degree of Taurus. Uh, sorry for that. I, I should have put here Taurus. Sun transits Kritika from, uh, as I said, from 10th May to 14th May during that time. It's the peak summer season in India, remember. It's like 
all fire going everywhere, you know, the temperature is very hot. <laughs> what festivals do we celebrate during this time? You can, if anyone can think, take a pause and think what are the festivals that we celebrate during this time? Let's see. I think the Holi is before that, right? Holi is before that, March. All right. One Karthik thing Purnima. Is, Karthik Purnima. Karthik That's Purnima right. happens when the moon is in Kritika Nakshatra. The full moon. Moon is in Kritika Nakshatra right. every month. The full moon is in Kritika Nakshatra. Karthi, that is, that's why the name is called Kartike, Kartik Mas. You know, Kartik Mas means when the moon, full moon is in the Kritika Nakshatra, it is called as Kartik Month, which happened just few days back. Okay. And uh, so definitely great day. Even in uh, some community as in Maharashtra and all, they have Shravan month where they will not eat non-veg and all. But in many South Indian communities, in my community, Karthik month is considered as a very holy month where they won't eat non-veg and they won't eat all those. And every Monday is of Karthik, very considered to be very auspicious for us. Uh, in fact, uh, after Diwali till that uh, 15 days, we, we will have uh, we will have a function where they uh, pray to the God and a goddess of each home and then they will call, they will sing bhajans, they will sing songs. Very, very holy month for uh, especially for a uh, uh, for people in Andhra, they do, I know. Okay. In Telugu community and all. And there are several, in, even in Tamil communities and all, I have seen those. Very, considered very holy month. Karthik month. Um, and it is on this Karthik Purnima day, we have uh, Ras Leela. Where Krishna and Radha, they said that they did a Ras Leela. Again, you know, uh, the merry nature of Agni and the flirtatious, not, I won't say flirting, but at least having that joyful time. Uh, with your partner and all. You could see those themes seeing during this time of the year. Okay. Kartik Purnima is one festival where moon is in the Kritika Nakshatra. Immediately you should think when you say Kartik Purnima, there's also one more festival that comes up during this time. Guru Nanak Jayanti. That's the same. Because the, the, the day of Kartik Purnima is the same day as Guru Nanak Jayanti. For six. Okay. So Guru Nanak Jayanti. Again, uh, the spiritual nature of, of Kritika Nakshatra or the, you can see that. Agni is considered also, one side of Agni is that, but the other side of Agni is very highly spiritual. That also one, one should not forget. So, very big day for a uh, Sikh community. Okay. So, Guru Nanak Jayanti is celebrated when the full moon is in the Kritika Nakshatra. Guru Nanak Jayanti. Now, this, Sandeep, you may know this, uh, this Atiratram, yeah, it's a very yeah. big ritual for Agni. And it's, it's very... I don't know. I was struck with the with this uh, when I saw it first time several years back. Actually, this is Ati Ratram, a Vedic ritual for Agni. And if you see this, this uh, there was I have given this link here. You should you people should see this these two links. Very interesting. Um, especially I don't know in one of the link I know some people who are doing some research on this, and uh, I know them because they were my ex professors. In fact, I, in one of those videos, I forget whether it's first or the second one. So what is this ritual is, in Kerala, uh, they have this fire ritual. I think it was, uh, this was one thing was documented in 1975. It was by one of the professors of Harvard University. Uh, he documented this. And in another thing, which happened after several years in April 2011. In what they do is, uh, it's a very old Vedic ritual. And if you see the mantras and all those things, it's a very, very different type of mantra and all, you know. Uh, um, uh, it's by the sounds and all which they make and the Shastra. And they have been, where they also have this type of uh, structure they create there. And you can see how the, all these instruments are there. And it's a ritual followed from long time back, followed from the Vedic time. And it's still followed. In the due course of time, people just forgot, but what this Namudris or the priest class of Kerala, they preserved it. And these people only know it, how they do. It's not practiced anywhere else. It's only practiced now in Kerala and in Andhra. These are the two places they do it now. Not in many other places. And you see all those instruments and then they make sound. It's a 12-day festival. And hymns are produced and very, very Vedic style of doing uh, uh, things. All Vedic style of doing and preparing food. They have shown all this in the document and then they make this pillar. Very geometrical shape structures and all. They make it in the form of bird and all. They offer this uh, things. But what happens in that is on the last day of the 12th after the very last time, 
thing they what they create this whole bundle or this whole uh, what they say made up of uh, what is called bundle you can i don't know what is bundle term in english the whole uh, the whole gathering the whole setup or what not right the yeah, by the, made, actual... the wooden structure which they make like where the sacrifice and all is done you know the last day you have to burn everything yeah. and yeah. yeah and okay that's the thing they have to the burn hall, the hall which they make for the fire ritual yeah yes yeah the hall, which they the hall make. Yeah. it's a temporary hall not like a right concrete hall but temporary like yeah. a made from leaves and wood and all and right. they burn this and when they burn this they say that uh, the rain the rain is followed no uh, rain definitely the rain comes okay that is what the thing is they burn it and the rain comes so in one of the video i have with one of my professors he he actually goes there and what he is doing is uh, i don't remember whether it is the first video or second you can see him uh, i used to work with him when i was in india back in bangalore what he was doing is he he comes he was uh, making his experiments in the april 2011 session and he was trying to see he's a, he's a basically an optics guy he was trying to get the spectrum of the particles which is emitted during this fire thing and he wants to understand whether this has got some uh, uh, in the fire which you put and all whether that has got some cloud seeding formation which brings the rain that can be possible so he's trying to understand the particle size trying to understand the composition of particles and through that artificial rain method probably you can call so that was his experiment actually so and the rain is always followed it seems and when the rain followed it's like you know your oblations have gone reached that's the actual concept so now we are trying to understand this procedure with some scientific ways and why does the rain follow and all those very interesting and the way they do uh, this ritual and all you should see it's a very fantastic video and the mantras they chant and all those how they are trained and all and it's I, uh, it's a blessing that still they have preserved it and they are still continuing continuing it and we should still preserve it. Uh, 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 let's see. But uh, Thiratram, uh, there's also a movie made. If, if you remember, some yeah, movie made, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. a movie actually made. Yeah, famous Paidragam, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Ah, Paidragam. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And I like the songs of that movie a lot. Yes. Okay, but uh, definitely watch for this. It's a it's a dying ritual, but I think we should preserve it. And the way the geometry and all is made, it's a very systematic way of doing it. How, and that reminded me, even during in our wedding and uh, wedding uh, thing in village type, not, not in the cities and all, it's a different, but you have to conduct that uh, pandal again uh, with the sticks and all those. And in the, where the uh, marriage ceremony is going, they will put three bricks and they will make some geometrical pattern and all, you know. And that's a ritual how they do it and all even in my in my community when marriages happen very similar to those structures and all uh, so if you really go to villages and see how they do it's, it's it's fantastic to see how how that all comes up okay then i was trying to see what is this connection of course we know that kartikya connection is with uh, kritika nakshatra uh, but some people will say that uh, the birth nakshatra of Kartikeya is uh, Kritika nakshatra. But uh, I was trying to do some research on it and I got through the web page, the birth of Kartikeya on the lunar calendar of the sixth day of the bright fortnight of Margashira month, the Kritika nakshatra of Tithi or Shuddha Paksha of Margashisha month and which doesn't make any sense to me because Margashisha Masa means what? Full moon is in Mrigashira. That's why the month name is Margashisha. Sixth day of the bright fourth night means nine days before Mrigashira. Now, nine days before Mrigashira will come as Dhanishta Nakshatra. So, I was doing those calculations. So, it's I don't know whether it's uh, correct to say that the, the Nakshatra of birth Nakshatra of Kartikeya is Kritika. That, that may be not be correct. Okay, Kar Kritika is associated with uh, Kartikeya, uh, Kartikeya is associated with Kritika Nakshatra because as I told the stories and how it went. There's also another thing which, which is Vaikashi, Vikas, uh, Vaikashi Visakam. That's a birthday of Lord Kartikya, they say. Vaikashi is during the May, mid to May, mid June. That is the Vaikashi month of Tamil. And it is Visakam Nakshatra. So Vishaka, in some community believe that the Kartik, the birth Nakshatra of Kartikya is Vishaka Nakshatra. That also is said. Okay. So again, you see again Kartikya and Vishaka Nakshatra again coming into the picture. There is some resemblance to this Kartikya and Vishaka. Of course, Indra Agni and Agni we could think of. Um, but yeah, but don't think that the nakshatra or birth nakshatra of Kartikeya is Kritika. The birth nakshatra of Kartikeya can be Vishaka, possible, 
but uh, not coming with uh, Kritika. Of course, he was taken care of with Kritika Nakshatra. That's a different thing. Uh, all those wives of those ages. So um, probably he got, that's why he got the name uh, Kartikeya, but nothing to do with his birth Nakshatra. Anyway, so far, so that's my last slide here. What we learn, Kritika Nakshatra can be various, go, go into chef industry or food industries, or maybe artistic ability or nourishment and all those things. Chef may be not be direct. They should also have a strong Vishaka. I will put that disclaimer. Abandonment issues, separation from family can have happened. Resources, where the moon exiles here. So it can be a good resources uh, and all those connection with Kritika. Agni and Kritika Nakshatra connection, because Agni is a deity of uh, Kritika Nakshatra. And, uh, and interestingly, moon, which is a planet of water, which is a water element, is exalted here in this nakshatra where Agni is the deity, which is very, you know, astronomy is always pair of opposites connecting. And I think through these opposites, we may be able to connect uh, or get some big themes. Um, some keywords here as usual. And uh, of course, during the research, what happened, I came across this family of Kashyapa, you know, I just thought maybe I'll just share this, nothing to do with Kritika. But uh, these are the sage wives of Mr. Kashyap. He has got, I don't know how many wives and Sursa, Kadru, Rodhavash, Khas, Danu, Diti, Aditi, Arishta, Muni, Tamara, Surabhi, Ila, Vinata. And each one gave rise to a different uh, species. Uh, so Sursa is nothing, mother of sea snakes. She is a Sursa. Sursa gave birth to our sea snakes. Kadru gave birth to our Nagas, uh, Takshak, Vasuki and all those. Rodhavash is the mother of 14,000 Nagas and Rodhavash Rakshasa again. Uh, Yakshas and Rakshasas were given birth by Khasa. Danu is basically for uh, Danavs. Diti gave to Daityas. Aditi gave to all Adityas. Arishta gave birth to Gandharvas. Muni, all Apsaras. Tamara is all for the donkeys, fowls, eagles, vultures and all. Surabhi to cows and buffaloes. Mother Ila to all plants. And Vinata is the mother to Garuda and Aruna. So, of course, I knew about... Uh, Vinata, I knew about uh, Kadru, I knew about Diti, Aditi, but uh, this was a nice, through some research when you do, you know, get things some nice images and they said, this is a good image to put, to see all the wives of Mr. Kashyap and see what children they produced. And yet Kashyap is a very happy person, he's got so many wives, so I don't know. So, <laughs> just, uh, I don't know why did I put this and why did it came to the Kritika, again Kritika Nakshatra, you know, wives, flirtations, maybe probably that and every time you see this, this happens with Nakshatra. Whenever we make a Nakshatra video, we see all those themes coming up. And uh, course, uh, the, these are also creators, right? Mothers of the different mm -hmm. races. So you're kind of mm -hmm. seeing all the mothers yeah. uh, of uh, various races also. That's also yes, interesting. Mother, moon. Yeah, moon is exalted here after all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think that's it. Let's see how much we go for today. Counting is going on. So. And keeping the clock here. Okay, this is something I, what I was doing my research. But here I will stop probably. I've talked a lot. Oh my gosh. But that's so far for from my side. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Pai. Would you like to add on something which uh, Aditya said? Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, Aditya has done a very good job. That's why we send him uh, first these days so that he can go and cover most of the ground. So yeah, again, then Dr. Pai, Aditya, A comes for Kritika. Correct. So that's why I came. I came. Just it happened. We don't exactly. Realize, see? <laughs> yeah, so after uh, Aditya, it is Arjuna. A again going next. <laughs> okay, it's my turn as Kritika again, starting with the the first father. So, okay, so very interesting uh, discussion points. I think he has done, uh, he's covered very good ground, but I'll, I'll put some more pointers that uh, I have come across. I mean, we have done several videos on Kritika. You can go and watch all others. I don't want to make it a, a repetition or whatever. Okay, now the first thing I wanted to say, it is very interesting that you, Aditya, also brought this up. Kritika is uh, the star constellation, asterism, where we see 
moon goes into its deep exaltation. And uh, interestingly, you'll also see that uh, Ashwini is a nakshatra where sun goes into its deep exaltation. And between the, the sun and the moon, you will see you know, Krit, uh, Ashwini and uh, Kritika, you will find Bharani is always coming in between, which is Yama, the dead. So it is all going from one luminary to the other luminary, which means either you go in the path of the sun, which is called as Devayana, or after your death, you go in the path of the moon, which is called as Pitriyana. And that is also the starting point of the Devayana nakshatras is uh, from Kritika nakshatra, going up to Vishaka nakshatra. And then starting from Anuradha nakshatra, going down to Bharani nakshatra, is called as the Pitriyana, the path of the moon and the path of the sun. So these are the, the two diverse things uh, but interestingly, just before you go into Yama Nakshatra, you have to go through the exaltation point of sun, which is kind of like a complete, the original source of light where you get a lot of enlightenment. And the starting point, we always start with the moon. And that is why it's very interesting to see that uh, when we look at the, the Dasha system, the Vimshotri Dasha system, you will always... Uh, start with the Kritika and uh, you see wherever the starting point of the Dashas are, there are multiple Dashas, Parasharishi has also given some conditional Dashas also. Now wherever it becomes the starting point of uh, the Dasha, you will see that Nakshatra will be ruled by the Sun. So in Vimshodri Dasha, the starting point is Kritika Nakshatra. That is why Kritika is ruled or associated with Vimshotri with Surya, the sun. Surprisingly, moon gets exalted there and that is how the journey begins. Now, if you go to another system like uh, Ashtotri, Ashtotri will uh, start from uh, the 108 years. Ashtotri will start from uh, Ardra Nakshatra. And Astotri system, Ardra is uh, the ruler, the ruler of Ardra in the planetary system is the Surya, Sun. And that is where the system will begin from Ardra. So that's why we have multiple systems and where the starting point is, this is system is called as Kritikadi system, which is for your Vimshotri. Ardradi system, where we start from Ardra. You know, so the starting point wherever we start from that becomes associated with the sun in that dasha system. So when I brought you the idea of the dasha system starting from a particular nakshatra, it should take you back to the story of daksha prajavati. Because daksha had organized the first grand yagna and that means they had to invoke the fire into the fire altar. And then we know what is called as Daksha Yagna Badha, which means it was completely ransacked and a chaos was created because Sathi eloped into that fire and she self immolated herself. So do you know there are three types of fire that has been said primordially? in the Shastras. One is called as a Garha Patya Agni. Okay. Which is usually is the fire which is brought into the household whenever the marriage happens. After the marriage, when the woman comes, you know, she has to go light uh, the, the, the chula. Chula means the, the fire where the kitchen fire. That is the householder's fire which cooks our food and makes it nourishing. So it is the house fire, which is there in the kitchen, which we say, we say it is Agni Asthana, which Aditya also mentioned, which is Southeast direction. So Agni is the regent or the directional lord of the Southeast direction, which is Agniya. That is your kitchen fire, which cooks and makes your fire nourishing. And from there, you move towards the east, 
from southeast to east, it becomes the fire of what is called as avayana agni. Avayana means what fire we are bringing inside the fire altar or what we are invoking inside the fire altar. And we say that is the mediator between humans and the gods. So that fire is called as avayana agni. And then we move towards the south, which means southeast is a fire, is the first fire which is brought inside the house. Then you take it to the east, that fire becomes the fire of your fire altar, where you mediate with the heavens. And the fire which you take to the south is called as Dakshina Agni, which becomes the fire where our body is burnt when we are going to the funeral fire, which means our final which burns our body and fat and everything is that fire. So we have three types of fire. So what is that? It's the triangle. So the fire of the southeast, the fire of the east and the fire of the south. So Dakshina Agni, fire of the south. The fire of the east, Avhayana Agni, which we take it into the fire, do our you know Agni Hotras and everything. And the fire of the um, south is Dakshina Agni. Okay, so that means if you see the iconography of Agni, he has three feet. Three feet, one, one feet of his father is falling in the east, which is the mediator. The one feet is falling inside the household where the woman cooks. And the third fire is where we have to burn our bodies. Now, why about the whole story of uh, Daksha Prajapati? We all know there were two deities who came and ransacked that with the other Marutas or Rudraganas. The main two were Veerabhadra and the other was Mahakali. Okay. Now see the, the nakshatra order. We start with the Bharani nakshatra, which is like Mahakali. Then we come to the Kritika nakshatra, which is kind of Veerabhadra, who is the most terrifying one. And then we have Rohini nakshatra, which is following, which is Prajapati is nakshatra, which is Daksha. Daksha means ritual fire. Now the story continues. What happens? He is beheaded. Daksha is beheaded. And then all the gods said, we have one of the progenitors who is a Daksha is a progenitor. He's one of the Prajapatis, which means because of when, you know, he, he has created 60 daughters were given in marriage. One of the 13 daughters, Aditya has shown, who was given to Kasha Parishi. 13 daughters. 27 were given to the moon, some to Kardama Rishi and other, you know, so many other. So this is for the progress of humanity. And once his head was cut, it was Shiva Rudra who had to come and give him the head of a goat or a ram. That becomes the starting point of our reference. Whether it is Kritika, we said it is connected to the goat. Whether it is Aries sign is connected to the head of the goat, which is the ram's head. That was what is the starting point. So basically, the Daksha Yagna, the first Yagna, the first one, is the starting point from where everything began. Isn't it interesting? So, Daksha you know, is what we said is the ram. That is the mount of, of Agni. Agni sits on a one-footed one-footed goat, which we also know is none other than the deity, which is Aja Ekapada. Aja means the one-footed goat. That is his vehicle. That is his mount. Agni. Very surprising. The iconography of Agni shows two heads. Two heads, one head has four tongues and that head is facing towards the earth. Why? It says he is ready to accept the fire from the four Vargas or the four Varnas, which is Kshatriya, one tongue. He accepts whatever is being given to him. Second is Brahmana, third is Shudra, fourth is Vaishya. So these are the Varnas, which are called the Chatur Varnas. So four tongues are one of the faces facing towards so that he is gobbling whatever is being given to him. The other head is looking at the heavens 
and it has got three tongues which is distributing it to the trinity which is brahma vishnu and shiva and their associates which means all indra loka basically so that is rajas tamas and sattva the three tongues which are giving the energies which are distributing so that's why he is the distributor so you can see the themes in karataka these are distributors as well because they are taking from somewhere giving it somewhere mediators distributors okay interestingly he doesn't have he has two heads but mostly if you see two head god what you will see they have four arms can you see two headed gods having any other number of hands that they will have okay it's very surprising if you see he you know aditya showed you shanmuga he is also called as subramanya kartikeya murugan guru guha swami nathan different names but uh, he is called shanmuga which means six faced but he has he has 12 arms okay with six faces but two legs not three so agni is a very unique he has got three legs and seven arms why is he got seven arms what does it mean and that is the reason you have to understand that he is the holder of the weekday lord the word for the weekday weekday in sanskrit is called as vara vara or dina vara the word vara comes from the sanskritized word called as vasara vasa means to recite ra means fire wherever the fire resides during that day especially during the sunrise time whichever is the hora that is operating that becomes the vasara he is going to reside in that and that is why the hora during the sunday would be he is residing in sun so that's why that day is called as sunday on monday the hora at the beginning when the sunrise happens he is residing in in moon that's why that day is called as monday and so on and so forth we know that so vasara ra the word is for agni so rama okay amun ra in egyptian pantheon deity is also is surya form of surya so a surya who is equivalent to surya on the earth after the sunset so after the sunset he becomes the surya of the earth which is agni so there is also a clan like we said surya vamshi okay then we said chandra vamshi surya vamshi means the solar dynasty rama was from the surya vamshi then there is also what is called as chandra vamshis which is from the lunar dynasty there was one more clan which sprung out from the fire <clears throat> some talk about it being the fire of angirasa some also say it is vashishta two variations you will see angirasa is the father of brahaspati jupiter he was doing a grand sacrifice and a purusha who sprang out from the flames which was coming from the agni he came out and he said please instruct me what to do so he was called as agni kula all agni vamsha there are four clans which usually belongs to the rajputana rajputs they claim that they are the agni vamshis who are they chavan we know prithirvaj chavan is one of them then there is also uh, solankis okay then pramars these are all there are four clans which came out of it and pratrahar okay pratrahar and pramar then solankis and chavans these were all the agni vamshis the same agni vamshis took the religion and it is believed they spread it across the world these were the and that's why you will see they became part of those agni worshipers you can see even in persia they became zoroastrians zoroastrians if you go to the parsis they are called as parsis in india they have their temples you go inside the parsi temple only parsis are allowed to go and you will find a fire holy fire and they pray to the holy fire inside which is agni so that means they are also kind of a offshoot from these agni kula or agni vamshis probably there is also agni hota you know agni there is a community 
Agnihotra community, you know, you know, Agnihotra. Yes, yeah. Agnihotra. Exactly. Agnihotra, so, if I'm mistaken. Agnihotra, exactly. And if yeah, you see, Agnihotra, exactly. So that you will see that what is uh, Dayananda Saraswati, you know, was it, uh, no, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, he started, uh, uh, what is that thing, uh, what we say? Arya Samaj. No, Arya Samaj. Now, Arya Samaj, you see, they again take fire. Even Arya Samaj marriages, they have that, you know, they take the same things, Arya Samaj. And Agni Hotris also, they worship only Surya and Brahaspati, Surya and Agni. So in the morning, when you start your uh, Agni Hotra, you say, Om Suryaya Swaha, Suryaya Idam Mama, Prajapate Swaha, Prajapate Idam Mama. That is at the sunrise time. At the sunset time, you say, Agni Swaha, Agni Idam Mama, Prajapate Swaha, Prajapate Idam Mama. These are four lines, morning two lines, evening two lines. Worshipping Surya and Prajapati in the morning and in the evening it is Agni and okay. Now, very interesting. Now let's that you have understood. Let us go. There is also we know Agni has, as Aditya said, he has multiple wives. But some of the two prominent wives that is worshipped or his concerts are that we said one is Vaha. Swaha is whenever you are offering oblations to the devatas in the heavens. So the energy that needs to take that energy to the heavens, we say Swaha into that fire when we are giving, you know. So she is the concert who takes the fire about to the heavens. And then there is another concert which takes the oblations, the waters that we give to our ancestors. She's called a Swadha. Om Swadha Sahita Pitrabhyo Namaha. So we offer the water from this part. Om Swadha Sahita Pitrabhyo Namaha. So we are offering waters which she is taking it to the ancestors. We are offering fire which Swaha is taking it to the heavens. So in one way you see Agni is the center force and he has two concerts. One connecting the heavens, Swaha, and the other connecting to the, the other world of the ancestors. So you can say the ancestral world, world is connected through our left nostril, like an analogy I'm saying, Ida Nadi, your left nostril. Your right, right nostril is like Pingala Nadi, which is connecting to the Devatas. And the central force, which is the Sushumna Nadi, the central channel, one is the lunar channel, one is the solar channel, the lunar currents, the solar currents. And the central channel where they both come together and there is spiraling is the Sushumna Nadi, is the central channel, the balancing. Now you see the same energies being transferred from Agni because he is the one who actually brought the fire ball which was emanating from Shiva and Parvati, their union, a ball em emerged. So Agni was the first carrier of that fire ball from, the, from Kailasha or wherever it is to the earth. She brought it with the help of Vayu. So Vayu and Agni. Agni Vayu. That is the energy. Agni and Vayu bringing that fireball to the earth. When it is brought to the earth, it is first given to the mother earth to keep it inside her belly, which means the crux of the earth is still a fireball. So she had kept him inside her womb at the center and she said, after some time, I can't keep it in. She's, he's too hot for me. So what he she does, she deposits that into the Ganga River. Ganga carries that fireball for some time, but she also sees it is becoming, you know, fumes and everything, her gas is, you know, melting, or it's evaporating the waters. So finally, she takes that and she takes it to the reeds. The reeds are the grass which grows on the banks of the river and she deposits it there. So that reed takes care of it and nourishes the child until the Saptarishi's six abandoned wives, which are called as the Kritikas, they find this child. As soon as the child, the fireball sees the 
six mothers is split up into six children and the six mothers nourish the six you know children so this whole concept if you see it is nothing but the concept of a test tube baby so if you see the test tube that is their incubation the incubator after if a child is born late or early or something which is not grown they keep the child in the incubator the incubator should have a temperature which has to be maintained just like how agni was it should be as you know conducive because it has to have the fluids the umbilical fluids which is replicating that like ganga it should also have the the grounding energies of the earth the earth mother and then it should have like the grass which is there which is creating that perfect environment and then it is the nourishing the feeding of that child so everything is the modern day test tube baby that we are talking about is the story itself that encapsulates and that is why the child was called as saravana sara which means grass or reeds that are growing on the banks of the river okay so because he was completely incubated by the waters the earth the you know everybody play the role in it and the six mothers which nourished him so this is the whole story and when parvati said is my son and she tried to hug all the six children it became one body with six heads that is your shanmuga right so now you know that there is a lot of energies where they can also split up into six parts what is that nuclear is it called a nuclear fission reaction where a certain atom can split itself into six parts and it can release energy similarly there is bringing of these atoms together and forming a union which is called as a fusion nuclear fusion they come together so that means both times they are re releasing energy that energy is the nuclear energy which is kartikeya that is why he has the the veil the spear which is the whenever you see the you release something the energy is going so coming together also is fire go is separating is also fire so we have something called as smoldering and there is welding isn't it if you want you, metals can also be broken with a torch of fire and metals can also be joined with the torch of fire smoldering welding all of these things are agni so do you see the analogy that i'm bringing also you see the taste that human has has six rasas in it so our tongue the seven tongues he's saying maybe there are seven different kinds of taste there are seven days of the week i told you he is vasara vara so agni is a primordial energy and there is also a way of trying to find out see agni can be in three planes that's why he has three legs i told you one of the three three legs is the three sides of a triangle that is what agni stands for which is the symbol of mars also mars is also sitting on a ram everything you see is also called angaraka angaraka or from angirasa anga anga means from the body so why am i bringing this up again is the three planes what is happens is there is a method in astrology to find out where is agni agni can be in the heavens on the earth or in the patala loka so if you are doing a yagna when agni is in the patala loka or is in the heaven how will is how is he going to receive and distribute so the 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 ritual which aditya has shown which is called as uh, atiratha that that ritual is called as agni stoma agni is kritika you know and soma is mrugashira so when you they come together they bring the rainfall where is the rainfall rohi nakshatra is the rainfall which is sitting in the middle agni and soma coming together agni and water which is fire water light and water is required for the crops to grow for the photosynthesis to happen so what he was talking about the spectrometry and everything it is through mantras and through specific chemical reactions it can create the rain bearing or rain seeding clouds also so that yagna is from yajurveda the mantras which are or rather i think samaveda or yajurveda i don't remember uh, the agni stoma yagna so these are how 
as he said the entire yagna shala which was created which is made from wood and you know uh, coconut leaves coconut tree you know branches and leaves are used to make the yagna shala the entire yagna shala burns after is burnt after the 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 12 day ritual or whatever is done or the 13 day ritual or 12 day i don't remember adityan was so the entire thing burns and what you see is certain rain bearing clouds are going and seeding the rains and immediately the rainfall will start coming there this was the principle of bringing rainfall through artificial means through yagnas it's like agni bringing indra exactly so indra agni which means that is the rainfall agni is the the agni is very important which is in the form of the sun's rays which evaporates the ocean oceanic waters which go up and cause the rain bearing clouds the huge big rain bearing clouds which become dark because they are with so much of water in it what our ancient saw oh, all the water is being kidnapped by this big monster who is drinking all the water which means is evaporating and this rain bearing so the rain bearing cloud was given the name of vritrasura and then everybody says oh he's taking away apa apa means the goddess of you know the water she is being kidnapped by vratrasura then our hero indra comes throws his thunderbolt oh drrr, and then the rainfall comes so he has released apa from the clutches of vratrasura vratrasura is dead why because the rain bearing clouds have been destroyed and apa is released back fresh water is coming to the earth that's why indra is called the lord of the rain so indra rules the fresh waters varuna rules the salty waters which is the oceans the sea and everything isn't it fascinating story but if you really see who is vritra the huge big dark rain bearing clouds which is taking away all the water vapors and creating itself you see the, the cyclone formation how it goes exactly so this is exactly. exactly what it is and then you see a thunderstorm what is the thunderbolt which is a, a indra so what they yeah. saw they saw a, a lightning bolt hitting and then there is rainfall wow indra is finally struck vritrasura and he has released the waters from the heavens story everything is a codified secret if you really look at it isn't it interesting so come to kartike kartikeya like i said agni has swaha and swada one connecting with the, the afterlife one connecting with the heavens swaha connects to the heavens swada connects to the pitrayana devayana welcome to kartikeya he has two concepts one comes from the heaven who is indra's daughter called as devayana devayani or devasena because kartike is also called devasena pati because he is the commander in chief of the godly forces so he is connecting devayani is connecting him to the heavens and valli is a creeper a, you know a tribal chief finds her near a creeper she is born with the mortal so she is called as valli valli means creeper so she is accepted and she becomes his consort so he is connecting force between the heavens and the earth because through valli he is connecting to the earth that's why it's very interesting to see if you see the right iconography of kartikeya or murugan you will see she is green in color valli is green in color which means she shows the natural vegetation the greenery and she is wearing a red sari and devayani is red red in color because she's got heavily she is wearing a green sari so look at the contrast that means they are bringing in so he becomes the shushumna nadi the central force devayan is the pingala nadi and shrivalli is a ida nadi so everything is a yogic thing is going around against agni and so these two nakshatras are a connection with kartikeya which is kritika and uh, sandeep said uh, sorry aditya said uh, it is vaikashi uh, vikasham that is a festival vishaka nakshatra both these nakshatras are termed in prashna marga as mishra 
ओके मिश्र नक्षत्र सो हियर ही शोइंग ओके सो सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली आई एम ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग दिस देन देर इज आल्सो यू कैन सी द नदर सिंबोलॉजी व्हिच इज एसोसिएटेड विद कार्तिकेय इज द पीकॉक now very interestingly you will see amongst the birds the species of birds in the bird species you will find usually the masculine of the bird families can become very ornate that is why it is the peacock which has the feather not the peahen so the peacock when the rainfall comes it will start spreading its thing is joining its dancing the rainfall is coming is like indra and he is dancing there with all his feathers and when the female pea hen looks at that wow look at that grandeur and then they want to mate so that is the mating season right and the peacock has the ability to crush the serpentine energy at his feet so rahu and ketu can be crushed by artikeya because he is sitting on that peacock that's the connection you see that's why it's called as subramanya also and is worshiped as the lord of the serpents he is the protective lord subramanya of the serpents okay so agni here is like a catalyst agni is the catalyst in any chemical reaction that you see chemistry we do all those mixing up some colors will come you know that is all the chemical reaction that is happening is a uh, agni so um also we see there is a form of agni which is called as jatara agni so there is jatara agni in ayurvedic parlance there are then what is called as a dhatva agni dhatva agni means we have sapt dhatus seven types of dhatus dhatus means what we are made of you know we have tendons ligaments you know muscles bones and other things so totally we have sapt dhatus so that that agni resides in them as dhatva agni seven then there is bhut agni what is bhut agni panch mahabhutas so agni resides in each of these elements also which is fire earth air water and ether he is there in some some sense that is called as bhut agni so totally 7 plus 5 plus 1 13 jatar agni the ayurvedic form of that is the digestive fire and what is uh, you know the fire that is there in our brain which is the vishaka nakshatra which is the fire is the intellectual fire the brain power which fires all our cells in the brain and the body and the metabolic fire which is there so all of this energies will come in kritika nakshatra okay also santip you know about uh, during what is that makara viduku as well we now we will be having the right. in uh, kerala shabrimala they will see a kind of a flame which is coming from the forest during yeah. the uttrayana when it begins makara sankranti day that is when you will see this makara vilaku isn't it yeah. so that is that is the bringer of the new light energy towards the northern hemisphere so again we know that six months the devatas uttra they are awake that is the day for them six months of our human year is night for them dakshina dakshinayana so the path of the sun also is a form of agni called a vaishvanara and if you see agni comes and he also presents to nara narayan which is arjuna and krishna he presents the chariot the gandiva bow and you know the story of the khandva forest and how he burned down the khandva forest is again a, a story of it's a reason why you know nara and narayana which is uh, arjuna is a nara and narayan is vishnu which is krishna they get the celestial weapons with them so they don't have they are not driving on a chariot which is of you know human origin it is celestial origin 
the chariot itself. The bow also the Gandiva is gifted by Agni to him. Okay. So all of this has very many stories that you can see. Uh, but I will end and I will add more as we go along. But I wanted to leave that there is a yogic side to this nakshatra also, which is it is the center point and the other two nakshatras which are falling in the you know behind it and you will see Prajapati is the creator. Yama is the one who takes away whatever he is created. And where do we go? We go into fire. So we are born inside water, which is the umbilical fluids of our mother. We come to earth when you are delivered. When, when the umbilical cord is cut, what is the umbilical cord cutting? It is Kritika Anakshatra. Kritika is the instrument which is used to bring you to this world. So Kritika is a sharp object. You can use a knife, you can use a scissors to cut the umbilical cord so that the water flows out, which is from the Bharani. Bharani is full of water. Appa Bharani, the water flowing out or the water bursting, which is the mother's umbilical fluids burst or it is cut. The water flows, Kritika, and then you are birthed. So you come to earth and you breathe air and finally we go back into fire which means when our dead bodies are burnt, the ash and the bones are gone and deposited again in the flowing river so that that body will be found again in water, which means another womb. You go back to water inside the womb. So water, earth, air, fire, again water. So the cycle will continue. That is the whole thing about these nakshatras. You know, coming from the Ashwini nakshatra is the horse. What is the horse? It's the sperm. The fastest sperm which gets to the egg becomes victorious. Why? What is the reward for the fastest sperm which swims the fastest and goes to the egg? The reward is its head is cut off. The fastest horse which was running towards some goal, the head is cut off because as soon as the first sperm enters the egg, the egg immediately cuts it off because whatever genetical code information is there in the head of the sperm. The tail was only for moving and going towards. Isn't it? All other millions of sperm which were wanting to be the first to get there are all left behind. So that one horse, that is why Ashwin is the horse's head. And what is Bharani? It is the one which cuts your head and takes you in. Once you've taken in, then you fertilize and you multiply. That's Bharani. Bharani is multiplier. Kritika is cutting of the, the umbilical cord. And then everything comes. Then what is the opposite that you were talking, which is Swati, which is breathing air. Okay, Bharani. Opposite of Bharani is Chitra, where your cells are multiplying. Vishwakarma is the creator of the fetus. Starts multiplying, 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 until you become a big multi-organs. Anyway, I think I should end that. Uh, Santip, uh, over to you to continue with this uh, journey. Uh, Dr. Pai, that was great actually. Um, I think uh, you how you mentioned about it, you being a yogic professor and all that is amazing. So, uh, Subaranya is basically like, uh, as you mentioned, he's in the middle and then you have Valli and Devi on your other side. Um, kind of uh, how the Ida and Pingal Nadi kind of thing. In fact, most of the gods have that kind of depiction. Like you also have Vishnu with the Budevi and Sri Devi kind of thing. Similar, same concept going on. So Vishnu is in the Sushantanadi, Budevi and Sri Devi are other, uh, as they call it. So it's very interesting, actually. Very interesting. Now, for Kritika, uh, first thing, of course, the deity is Agni. So first thing I want to speak about was Agni. Agni is Kritika. So it's very interesting. So of course, uh, I'm an Akshatra astrologer. So I recently... Not so recent, but I met one Kerala astrologer, uh, you know, one of these days. The, this person was asking me, how can you use nakshatras to make prediction and all that? So I was basically telling him, uh, he he like, uh, he like was not understanding that idea. So I said, look, it's basically look at the idea of the deity and then you can see that. So one simple example I told him was that if you have a benefic planet in Kritika nakshatra, at some point in time, there was a good fire that happened or a blessing of a good fire, a good ritual was done. Something like that can be said. Or if there is a malefic planet in uh, Kritika Nakshatra, in Kerala, there is a 
tradition at least where you light a deepam in the morning and evening at least there is a tradition i mean supposed to be a daily tradition but nowadays it's uh, uh, it's like any other tradition having its own problems but uh, usually you can say that if a malefic plant is there in a kritika nakshatra you can say the fire is not being lit in the home similar like that so that kind of thing so he was immediately immediately able to understand the concept which i was telling him uh, uh, at that point in time because now he could click okay it's it's like now in general jyotisha you are using similar kind of concept you can get to the same thing in different ways uh, so it was very interesting so this idea of fire uh, the agni so a benefic planet at some point in time a good fire could have happened now this could be me this could mean that at some point in time a ritual might have been done now why is it that fire is used uh, in many rituals and so forth that's very interesting um in fact uh, there are many kinds of fire which dr pai also explained the home fire the the uh, death fire and the um, the fire in the household and so forth the fire to connect with the gods which is very interesting uh, in fact uh, there is some more additional kinds of fire uh, uh, dr pai again mentioned the digestive fire then i think the fire of the lightning is one of the fire which was which was also which was also mentioned uh, there is a different kind of fire depending upon the offerings you are giving to the fire you also get different kinds of fires actually so sometimes if you offer honey so it's like a different kind of fire if you offer uh, flowers it becomes a different kind of fire uh, fires actually sometimes you can offer kheer to the fire now it's a different kind of fire <laughs> so fire is having that kind of quality also in, in terms of that so different kind of flower, flowers can offer so there are many kind of uh, fires like that so i think there was one you have this uh, uh, one uh, the hiranya fire hiranya agni as it's called is basically the the uh, the uh, agni which dr pai mentioned which is like the agni agni the agni of the fire rituals and then uh, you have the trimadu fire which is very interesting it becomes kanaka agni in which you are offering milk sugar and honey uh, the trimadu kind of thing if you offer to fire that fire has that different kind of quality and then um, if you offer if you mix that with uh, if you offer to the fire rice and kheer um, then it becomes kheer is the indian dish uh, sweet dish and all that made with rice it becomes krishna agni and then the patma in patma homa usually you, they say if you offer flowers it becomes like suvarna and lohita agni which is interesting and then um, if you offer sesame seed to the fire which is normal in pitru homas and all that that becomes dhumini agni so it's a uh, the agni is supposed to be different and then you have the uh, manojava agni if you in basically if you are offering any any invocations in which gods are coming in that becomes that i think dr pai also mentioned pitroma is also different kind of agni if you offer wood to the fire it becomes something called as karalika agni and all that. so different puranas show different kind of agnis actually pure milk is offered to the fire you can even do that it becomes rakta agni and bahuruba agni when you offering flower again a different kind of thing and then uh daily fire which are using so this is a very important point so different kind of fires can carry different kind of properties also so it was very interesting when aditya was mentioning uh, in the adhiratra homa the adhiratra fire ritual the entire thing eventually it is it possible that there was the cloud seeding uh, properties to that fire and when that fire goes to the top when the cloud clouds have been seeded with that particular fire you're getting um a rain and all that so is there a big blessing to that land uh, when they do the um uh, adhiratra homa so similarly different kind of fires will can you give you different kind of blessings now for some for some uh, instances they say that if you want blessing of uh, a desire fulfilling goddess like ameshwari and all that quite often they will say that you need to offer one particular kind of flower 10000 flowers with this mantra and then after that along with ghee then you get the blessing of that particular devi and all that so you want blessing of uh, vishnu or something we will say you have to offer blessing you have to offer 10000 lotus flowers to this particular fire and all that they will say that so now in some cases they might say not uh, you might have to offer a uh, food with certain things and this mantra also needs to be offered along with that and then you get the blessing of the deity uh, in this particular so so one so very important thing is that different kind of fire rituals can give you different kind of results different kind of offerings to the fire will also give you very specific kind of results also so that is a very simple idea uh, now this is a very interesting idea also so now the agni of course if you have any planting kritika the take away from here is that you should start doing a fire ritual yourself that's the first uh, starting 
blunt point about it now nowadays there are a lot of people starting to do many kind of simpler homas like uh, you know you have the agniyotri which uh, mantra dr pai mentioned uh, in the morning uh, agniyotri is the simplest homa that can be done exactly at the moment of sunrise and exactly at the moment of sunset you are giving three kinds of offerings which is um, which is basically interesting again you offer cow dung you offer rice and then you offer ghee three things are offered uh, to the you chant that particular mantra the um, indraya mantra and the prajapati mantra the agniya mantra and the prajapati mantra in the morning sunrise and sunset people who started doing agniyotri lot of blessings come their health has improved they do not feel any black magic effect but of course you have to wake up at sunrise and uh, do at sunset also that kind of thing is there you have to have that schedule going on is one of the best things now i've seen that uh, usually with kritika nakshatra natives this fire is something that will come very natural to them so of course they are natural cooks very naturally they are inclined towards fire rituals now in fact uh, talking about fire rituals the simplest the one of the uh, deities who is homa priya uh, is basically ganesha actually it's very interesting to think about that so ganesha is the uh, interesting thing that ganesha is the elder brother of kartikeya and he's also supposedly the best he likes fires actually he loves fires actually he's very and he likes fire offerings through fire so ganesha is more happy when you give him offerings through fire actually which is very interesting so so doing the ganipati homa is the simplest homa which you can do in fact i have come across people who even claimed even to do ganpati homa you just need like a, a simple jackfruit wood and just offer ghee to it chant ganpati mantra offer ghee, offer ghee and offer one coconut to it also ganpati homa simple simple as that three they said is the simplest uh, ganpati homa that can be done and all that but anyway uh, key thing is that uh, as long as you offer something to fire a fire ritual lot of blessings do come in a very amazing way especially with kritika nakshatra i cannot uh, say that enough the uh, and different kinds of agni which i mentioned are also very powerful and these become important when you are trying to uh, attain uh, siddhis or specific mantras and all that so it becomes very important specific kind of flowers can so now that uh, aditya has mentioned about the cloud seeding thing good chance something like that is happening with different kind of flowers very specific kind of material when it breaks down and so for very specific energies would be coming through that fire and all that now this is also one more concept when a god or a goddess when you it's very interesting in there is a very interesting book on this homa and all that called as sacred flames actually i believe it is written by uh, rohit arya or uh, santoshi santosh ma some i forget the name of the author but uh, in the sacred flames book uh, it, it was said that even the symbols that we take for granted like the om or the swastika apparently the first time they actually saw those symbols was in a fire actually when the rishis were doing the fire ritual it is in the fire that they could see this om the swastika the om many gods and goddesses come forth and all that it's very very fascinating so in the sense that the gods originally were communicated directly through fire now this is very interesting to think about why communicate gods through fire it's very easy gods carry higher energy they are carrying more energy than us so only through the medium of a high energy medium like fire something that is always burning always energetic that's why these gods and goddesses are more easily accessible through fires so it's like uh, talking to like uh, usain bolt who is running always 100 meter space you cannot even talk to the gods are higher energy so gods are high energy like uh, uh, fiery actually so that particular aspect so it makes it easier to communicate to the gods directly through fire so that makes it much more easier so when you take high speed uh, uh, photographs of the fire rituals quite often and this i have seen multiple times you can actually see sometimes correct images of shiva coming in or sometimes you might see image of parvati coming in uh, and so forth and all that now this is also a very interesting point there are in some cases you can actually see images of om swastika other kind of things which is taken for granted coming through the fire also you can actually see the high speed photography has opened that up very significantly that's a very very interesting thing now the um, now fire is also very um, uh, interesting because in there is one concept called temple is that um, after the aarti they'll actually burn the camphor and they'll actually offer that is a final offering almost and then they bring that fire to the outside uh, to the temple and then everyone touches the fire and brings that energy from the fire into their aura so they say that this one doesn't have any um when you do that when you touch the fire there is no ashuddhi to it it's kind of like because fire is supposed to be pure actually 
this is very interesting so kritika nakshatra natives might have a very strong focus on purity coming with a pure aspect and so for everything should be precise everything should be perfect that kind of thing can be more very strong for kritika also and agni shuddhi is also there so if you touch the fire coming from a temple or especially coming from a god or goddess uh, or fire that is in which which is offered to a deity that particular fire is also very powerful in terms of purifying the energy so in some cases we might have a altar in a home but we might not be doing the aarti we might not be lighting camp for doing it around the gods now there are two sides to it one is that it will purify the energy around the idols or the murtis in your home second is that you yourself can also get some energy from the fire directly so of course if a malefic planet if you want to increase energy in your life improve energy do the simple aarti in your home at least do that as a minimal thing your life will actually begin to improve significantly aarti meaning you just burn camp for offer it to the idols around your home and allow that deity to be access to the fire because you offer to the image of the deity so the fire will purify the energy around the idol and the deity's energy can be accessed through the fire as well which is uh, very uh, which is very uh, amazing also now the southeast uh, uh, of course uh, uh, aditya also mentioned how the southeast direction is linked with uh, agni agni as it's called can be linked with the southeast also so of course the take away from that point is definitely look at the southeast direction of your home do you have problems in the uh, southeast direction is the southeast direction clean in your home is it perfect is it are you storing garbage there so if that is the case you will have problems so definitely you have to make sure the southeast direction is kept easy now southeast direction is also linked with venus direction which is very interesting because agni is linked with venus who would think like that but definitely if you think in terms of the masculine virility masculine sperm and all that definitely venus is also shukra agni can also be linked with shukra also that kind of thing can also be seen so the southeast direction becomes needs to be kept clean and so forth in order to invite the energy of wealth in order to invite the energy of venus also in general so that is also one more point now the other point is that of course in the in the world map the southeast is actually linked right now with australia the current cricket world champions unfortunately but anyway then uh, they are uh the australia direction and new zealand is also linked with southeast direction so usually in general you will see with kritika nakshatra natives or any dominant venus natives also they might be naturally having some karma with australia and new zealand and southeast asia kind of thing and all that so for them visiting bali could be an important thing for them and so forth that kind of karma could also play out so that's a very subtle point but uh, it's an astrology uh, kind of point which you can make by just by the link of kritika with the southeast direction and so forth in fact this is also interesting they say the chola empire of uh, tamil nadu was the only empire that actually had an island uh, um, that that empire that extended beyond india to the south asian lands also so and they were hardcore worshippers of kritika kartike and all that so without doubt you can see that very interesting energy of uh, agni getting stimulated uh, uh, stimulated and then the kritika kartike's energy activating Uh, agni energy is very strong so the naturally they would go to southeast direction to conquer and all that very interesting to think about um so that's a very interesting very fascinating point uh, if you link with uh, deity so certain deities energies can make you go towards certain direction that's a very important point now the other uh, uh, point uh, i mentioned about different kinds of agni uh, also and now this is also very interesting thing so i came across a client who had some graha in uh, kritika one of the things they did was that apparently there was a story or there that they got this jwala they their ancestor went to this jwala mukhi mata temple they actually asked the priest to give that fire to that uh, ancestor their ancestor carried that fire all the way to the from jwala mukhi mata temple to their ancestral village and they maintained that fire so it's similar to what dr pai was saying in terms of arya samaj and all that so so this worshiping of fire but a, a divine fire that was honored which has a divine origin of course the uh, they say that jwalamukhi mata temple is a very of course uh, that you only see a fire in the temple the mata is in the form of fire as well they say so that is an interesting thing but uh, the historic historical things like that uh, in which you are have, getting a fire from a ritual a fire from a divine place and that fire is being honored now same principle can be activated even in daily uh, aspects also so say you are doing a ganapati homa yourself now of course this uh, vedikastrology.org website is there pvr narsimha rao is doing a lot of homa thing and all that so a lot of easy homa movement uh, kind of thing is a lagu homa is being 
um, popularized by him. So definitely easy. Now you can download Homa Manual. A lot of uh, women are doing it, in fact. Now women is expected to naturally drawn towards Homa and fire rituals because moon is getting exiled in Kritika Nakshatra. So that makes sense also. Now, um, now one thing what which I thought was interesting is that can you capture a fire in which a god or goddess come? So for instance, you do the Havan. Uh, the Havan Kund fire can be captured in a separate Diya and you can actually uh, do that. So the Diya which is lit from a... Sometimes in some cases when you're doing specific rituals, Many times the fire is actually taken from the home temple. Even when you're doing a havan in your home, you actually have to take the fire initially from your own puja room in front of your god. And that fire is used to light uh, the homa fire actually. Similarly, in many temples and so forth, when you're doing rituals, the fire is actually taken from the uh, the divine place there. And then you the, the fire is always brought from the inside and it's actually um, taken to the... Um, taken to cook, start the cooking and so forth and all that. So some rituals like that is something you can see. So sometimes specific fires also can carry specific blessings. Now in general, they say, uh, you know, even Agni Sakshi is an actual concept in which you make fire as a witness to your meditation and your effort. So Agni Sakshi is a very important concept in uh, marriage. So Agni is the Sakshi around which you are taking seven rounds with your husband and wife, uh, three rounds or seven rounds depending upon uh, region and traditions. And then Agni is a witness to the marriage. So, and then gods and goddesses are a witness to the marriage. Now, this is very interesting. Many times, uh, questions asked, uh, why should we marry? Uh, why not do a court marriage first and then have a, a normal marriage? But the first, anytime you're doing a ritual of marriage, you are making gods as witness to your marriage through the fire. And that will bring in blessings of that, gods and goddesses. Only when, when the ritualistic blessings have come for, then you're doing the court marriage. Now, court marriage is a human affair, so that is a that is not carrying any blessings with it. But when you do a fire ritual and so forth, uh, a ritual around fire, the blessings, the Agni, the Sakshi to your marriage, that will give additional protection, additional energy, and additional blessings to your marriage also. So that kind of, that kind of a thing is also very important. Some cases, they might have situations where they are unable to uh, that complications around this thing and all that can also happen. Admittedly, sometimes they are like they they are marrying without the presence of fire, things like that. That kind of thing can also be predicted here actually. Now, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, fire that is carried from one particular temple or from one particular location to another. Now, Agni Sakshi is also a very important concept. They always recommend whenever you're doing any meditation practice, any mantra chanting. Always light, a, always light a, a diya and do the mantra chani. They always recommend that. Or at least have a diya lit in general. Or at least minimum thing, at least have a, at least have an incense burning so that that agni of that incense is at least witnessing your mantras, what they are recommend. So in fact, one of the things they say, agni not only gives you light, it also energizes you, it also actually uh, protects you also. So that fire, that incense fire is capable of protecting your mantras much more easily. So without doubt, when you're doing mantras in the presence of Agni, without the presence of Agni, you will see a big difference. That is a big thing I can say. Now, in fact, when you're doing fire, when you're inviting the gods and goddesses through fire rituals, even just when you're doing puja for a god or goddess or devi or someone, the different, the lamp will, different kind of devatas will show up as different kind of color for the flame and so forth, which is, which is some of the things which I mentioned. So you're inviting a more... Uh, Saumya Devata, the fire is very Saumya, completely fine, very peaceful fire in the lamb and all that, you see that. But when you're inviting, inviting some Ugra Devata, like very fierce deity, like Tara or Goddess Kali and all that, you'll see that fire is also becoming very active, very violent kind of thing. You might see that. The simple lamp fire is actually behaving like that. You might see that. The fire's color might change and all that is very normal when you begin to see this kind of gods and goddesses and so forth. That's a very powerful thing also. Now, now, fire, uh, of course, uh, um, this is the other aspect uh, uh, of fire, the aspect of holy fire and so forth. So even in Olympics also, you find they carry the flame of the Olympic torch is still maintained and so forth. So you can see this uh, fire being important for the starting point of Olympics in a ritualistic fashion. So even the four years of Olympics, the fire is traveling from one country to another country. It is still being maintained. So the fire, you know, the fire is a very important concept in actual uh, human uh, thing. In fact, uh, in one um, and in in one of these yogis' books, he himself, his guru was actually explained to this yogi about um, you know I think it's in his Shriyam's book itself. 
like how his guru was kind of showing the guru chanted some mantras to the fire the fire became like six feet tall or something 10 feet tall or something and then eventually uh, kind of showing how this fire is a living kind of entity actually so it's a very powerful thing if you actually have a fire so usually this is always recommended when you're, you're doing any kind of spiritual practice whether it's uh, a mantra chanting, yoga also, doing it in the presence of fire will always enhance it hundredfold because of that. And it's simple as that. Even the simplest meditation, if you do the simple, simplest presence of fire, extremely powerful results you'll get. Now, fire, uh, of course, we talked about a lot of spiritual matters now. Uh, now, there are a couple more interesting things about fire I want to talk. One is that, there is a, one of the things I usually encourage for natives with planets in uh, fire signs or Kritika Nakshatra or Vishaka Nakshatra is a simple act called as Vasana Daha Tantra. So Vasana Daha Tantra is the, this was originally coined by this uh, HimalayanAcademy.com website, uh, Guru, uh, Sadguru, uh, original Guru was Sadguru Shivaya Subhrahmanya Sami, hardcore orthodox Shaivite Sampradaya. So in this particular website, this particular Guru was recommending this Vasana Daha Tantra in which you would write down your memories on piece of paper and then you just basically burn that paper immediately. So the moment when one paper is, uh, you finish writing that uh, one paper is complete, that paper is over, you burn that paper immediately and then continue writing, burn the next paper immediately and so forth. So whatever is on your mind, you're passing it on to the fire and then you're burning that paper to purify that energy. Now something happens when this happens, when you do this particular ritual. All that emotional load which you carry is actually transferred to the paper and it is getting purified by fire. Whoever did this, especially the female clients who were I recommended that, everyone experienced a lot of uh, blessings, a lot of clarity with their emotions when they did that. I cannot say this enough. Now, now in fact, the guru went on to say you can do the Vasanda Tantra in very specific ways. You can have an annual, a chronicle kind of Vasanda Tantra in which you write down all your memories from each year by year and so forth. So first you chronicle all the memories. Uh, you write the um, write down your memories from year one. First, when you're two years old, what happened? Five years old, what happened? And so forth. You go through that. It until your adult uh, adult years, whatever uh, memories you have, you keep on writing, keep on burning, and so forth. The next stage of writing is what they say was to actually write about all your memories regarding every person whom you ever remember. So one thing is that you write down your memories, You, whatever energetic interaction is there, you actually remove that emotional vasanas component from it when you burn that uh, paper, uh, when you have written, it, written, them, written them down. So that's the second phase in which you are writing it by uh, the people, whoever you know, you write them down and you burn that up. Third thing, they are, third thing he recommended was to, depending upon the intensity of the experience you have, Sometimes you might have still that uh, memory of like, uh, this was very close life, uh, uh, close encounter with death experience, or this was the biggest uh, blissful experience in meditation I had. Or sometimes here also, this is where also the, that guru says, if you still have any porn stars still running in your mind, if you still remember that porn movies and all that which you watched, if you still remember your highest sexual experience and all that which you have, write them down and burn that up also at this point. Now, something happens when you do this thing. All your mental moon energy is actually transferred to the paper, which is mercury, and you're burning it up, which is purification is happening through sun and so forth, actually. So it's a very powerful ritual. Vasanda Tantra is a very, very powerful thing. In fact, the same uh, guru whom I mentioned, he has this uh, big uh, Hindu monastery in Kauai Island in Hawaii and all that. Uh, he said that uh, this is a very interesting point. So usually... When you do Homa, uh, usually one of the things which the priest would ask is that write down the name and nakshatras of everyone who is present here. And in the end, then the priest would put that paper into the fire. So he's like, so basically the idea is that whoever is present here should get blessings. But to be more specific with the blessings, you write down the name and nakshatra. The, the helpers of that particular God will get those names and nakshatra from the divine loka. And then they will actually start to be more precise with how they can help and all that. Now, in fact, this particular guru was also the opinion. If you need, if you're doing a particular havan every day, you're doing a Ganapati Homa, for instance, or every day you're doing a, doing a, a Agni Vata, for instance, you can write down whatever your prayers are. Oh, God, give me this, give me that. Oh, God, help me with this. Oh, God, help me attain moksha. Whatever be the prayer you have, offer it to the fire. Now, say you're having a legal thing. So, you are in a human situation. I have this particular thing. My contract with this company is having this particular clause is having, is having a problem. 
even take a photo stat of that uh, contract and offer it to the fire is what this particular guru was telling be more precise with regard to your prayers be more precise with regard to what you are informing the gods and so forth which is very very interesting idea so very simple idea from practical sense if you have any prayers always uh, have that uh, uh, try to offer those prayers to through the medium of fire in front of a deity you might see some amazing results when you do that it's a very very powerful thing of course in this uh, particular guru's ashram in kawai island there is a, apparently they notice one thing there is a big nataraja statue there and there is a fire uh, like a, a fire that is always kept burning there actually uh, akanda kind of diya going kind of thing there now they observe that whenever they wrote down a prayer and offered it to that fire that prayers got quickly answered <laughs> so a lot of requests came to that particular temple uh, with world over people are sending their uh, prayers to that uh, to that particular temple so they could be offered to that fire and that prayer would get answered because of course it's in a shiva temple and all that and so forth so very interesting observation this has a lot of practical thing to it you can also do it wherever you are at if you have a deepa in your home and all that if you are lighting a diya in your home you can easily burn that paper in front of the deity after you chant lot of mantra you can see your prayers getting answered a lot now this is a, this is also a very interesting thing because when you look at chinese uh, uh, occult uh, systems and so forth many of the systems in chinese thing is that you draw like a symbol you draw like a thing and you have to burn that actually you have to burn that uh, thing so to remove the ghost you have to burn some uh, charms and all that on paper that is how chinese thing works in fact even in chinese thing if you have to offer ancestral money you can get a picture of the ancestral money and all that and you burn that thing you want your ancestors to get tv fridge car uh, plane and all that you take pictures of this and you burn it into the fire and your ancestors in the ancestral world apparently gets it actually very pure thing going on very pure uh, mechanism thing going on now um, so the occult value of fire is very very big and i cannot say that enough now there are many ways to activate fires also like i said um, many times i've seen people would burn a specific symbol to that uh, fire for 30 days and so forth and then they get that fire in a very particular quality and so forth and that sometimes getting that that when that when you have burned something burned a charm for 30 days and then 30 day at the 30 day you might get a very specific quality from that fire and it could have its own energetic blessings without doubt so th- that's a very interesting thing this fire now uh, now murugan is a very interesting uh, figure but uh, here in again i mentioned a chinese thing and all that so what is interesting here with the kritika nakshatra is also like uh, this whole concept of uh, the god of war action so these nakshatra natives are quick to <laughs> quick to fight that's a very easy thing you can say are, it's the god of war after all it's the final nakshatra pada aries after all so definitely they are quick to quick to argue quick to uh, quick to be willing to go to battle and all that that kind of energy is there the god of war is a very interesting uh, concept also definitely so these nakshatra natives might have experience with war they are more prone to like becoming soldiers in the us and so forth and all that they might have had their own afghanistan experience iraq experience stuff like that that kind of thing can also be happening or at some point in time a war could have affected their family history uh, some kind of karma with war can be seen there the god of war kartikeya is the god of war and that's a very very uh, interesting um, concept also because many times you find there are certain uh, temples even in china and all that you might find temples were an warrior energy is actually or not so that is where you see now interestingly you find the kritika kartikeya's weapon is the spear or the veil so veil of course uh, is the spear actually so many times in fact in chinese martial arts spear is considered to be a more strongest weapon even than the sword actually so because it's very you can quickly you can be quick with your actions and you can give you quick results and so forth now usually these natives will be drawn to the art of martial arts and all that that's a very normal thing and they might be drawn to the art of uh, gallery fight uh, martial arts tai chi or the shingi chuan all that particular martial arts various martial arts can easily come for them that is also one of the other aspects with the god of war with kritika now the murugan's veil is an actual thing you can actually get uh, murugan's veil blessed from murugan temple you can carry a small with veil with you as protection that's a very easy thing it's a practical south indian thing which many people do you can always get a small murugan's veil get it blessed from a temple carry it of course you can also donate a murugan's veil to a temple to help you get some blessings i number one uh, someone had shared with me that uh, they are an 
they got a dream where one ancestor was going through a health crisis. The other older ancestor came in the dream and advised them to basically donate one whale to a Murugan temple. When they did that, the other ancestor was able to come out of ICU and all that. So it makes perfect sense, actually. So you never know. Sometimes offering a weapon to a deity can help you out a lot. Especially for Murugan, donating a whale to a Murugan temple can be very good. Now, need not be just Murugan. You can also donate other kind of weapons to gods also. So you might have got a Kali temple. You might you can always donate a sword. You can donate a sword talwar to a Mata temple. You can donate a, a Trishul to a Bairo temple. You can even donate like a, a, you know a, a sword to like a, any of the other gods and a, a Gada to Hanuman temple. That kind of thing can also be done. So need not be that you had, in some cases you can donate the actual weapon. In some cases you just need to donate a uh, image of the weapon, a small miniature version of the weapon also. But donating the actual weapon is always good. Now, interestingly, donating the actual weapon, if you donated a sword to a deity, of a, say you are donating a sword to a Kali temple, every year you have to maintain that sword. The sharpness of the sword is to be maintained. So you have to go to the blacksmith, like blacksmith kind of karma has to be playing out. So that is also one of the things if you're donating the sword, make sure the sword which you're donated is being annually maintained, especially if it's an actual sword and all. It is a typical thing. Before in Kerala and all that, before festivals happen, it's a ritual where the blacksmiths are invited. They take the sword and they give it back the swords eventually, which they worked upon and all that. And that sword is basically used by the goddess. And in fact, the blacksmiths at that point in time will also look at the beetle leaf and make predictions based on that also, based on what they see in the beetle leaf. That kind of thing also happens. It's a very unique thing. But yeah, that kind of thing happens. But this karma with weapons, which Aditya also mentioned, the karma with knife, the karma with blade, is an actual thing for them. So they might get hurt by weapons. They might, they're using a knife, then they're suddenly hitting their hands. That kind of thing can sometimes happen. Sometimes, however, you can also use this in a spiritual setting, in a spiritual way. The easiest way to do that, of course, if you have a murti in your home, you can always get a Morgan's whale and keep it in your home, as I mentioned. Now, some people in different traditions and all that, they will actually get swords and talwars and all that and keep it in their home. I know some people who do that. But you can also do something, a simpler thing, which I've seen that works with that. You can get this steel called as Damascus steel. It's like a very unique, powerful, spiritual steel. It's a, and it's carrying more spiritual energy to it. Hold it in your right hand and meditate. Meditate upon any goddess Kali or any Mata kind of thing, like a Durga or someone. Hold it in your right hand, meditate or chant some simple Durga mantras. Face the east direction is what they recommend when you do that. And then hold it in your right hand pray the Durga Mantra and meditate so that the energy is stored in that uh, uh, stored in that dagger and then you can just keep it in your spiritual altar like that. That's an easy way to activate some good spiritual weapons energy in your chart. That kind of thing. Now what is interesting is that you find many of the shamans will naturally be using the spiritual knife. They will good chance they are already using a spiritual dagger. Now definitely Kritika Nakshatra is the Nakshatra where uh, this, is all, this is also one of those shamanic nakshatra, just like Barney and all that, where they are more likely to do spiritual practices, more likely to do heavy mantras and all that. Now, Kritika is also seven, the Agni is having seven tongues. So these nakshatra natives are gifted with mantra chanting. In fact, uh, this was one of those interesting things which uh, uh, long ago a friend of mine did some research on um, exorcists actually, people who exercise as demons and ghosts. So usually, apparently, exorcist people apparently had a prominent Kritika. So some Christian monk or someone who actually exercised ghosts or someone, he apparently had a prominent Kritika. So if they're excited, this can be an actual karma for them. They, they might go into some home, they are doing some prayers and so forth, and they might actually have to banish the ghosts away. That kind of thing could happen. Now, sometimes you feel, you know, relatives who are, you who are very vocal, you know that uh, you, they start talking, they are not going to stop. Sometimes you can meet those kind of people. So you know no ghost is going to survive in those homes also because they are always constantly talking. No ghost is going to be patient. That kind of thing can also be seen. But this uh, banishing karma is also one more thing that can happen very strongly with Kritika. Now the, um, um, the other thing, uh, so this uh, mantra chanting karma is very strong with Kritika. So there are certain nakshatras where I encourage to do mantras, definitely. Maga Nakshatra or Purafalika Nakshatra. Kritika Nakshatra is a very big Nakshatra if I see any planet there. I encourage them to do any kind of mantra. They are gifted in mantra chani. Pusha Nakshatra. These Nakshatras, if they start doing mantras, a lot of blessings come to them very easily. They are gifted in mantra chani. They can be very precise in their intonations and so forth. 
and definitely they are also very creative they can definitely have a lot of creation uh, aspect also uh, in their aspect so a lot of creative people a lot of singers will have kritika a lot of uh, artists uh, will have kritika in fact i remember uh, in dr pai had taught about i think the example he shared was that of katherine hepburn or someone katherine hepburn some there was one female actress who had prominent kritika most of the times most of the actors will have <laughs> kritika that is one thing that can also happen now um, one thing i want to talk also was that of uh, um, the um, yeah this god of war is very interesting because there is a video game called as god of war it became a huge franchise the god of war apparently the, there is a the character kratos he ended up uh, he ends up going to kill zeus and olympians and all that so he goes on extinguishes all the thing and became a huge franchise now they are ran out of the greek god now they are uh, they are having a north god thing so now kratos is trying to kill odin and all that is what is happening in the god of war part uh, 7 or 6 or something like that but anyway you see this kind of war aspect very strongly there and it became a huge hit, you know and uh, this guy would always scream and the character would always scream he was smeared with uh, red color and all that uh, you can see very kind of weapons and so forth very easily so natives are naturally drawn to playing more violent video games which is a not so great good healthy habit if you are conscious of that <laughs> because sometimes if you play violent video games you are having problems in your life good chance both are linked so when you start playing more peaceful video games you might see things improving also something like that i had someone like that actually or they bought a ps5 and they started playing a great ps5 and all that they <laughs> you know, they started some call of duty kind of game in which they are shooting at people and then the next day they are in the traffic jam they are having someone banging at their <laughs> they play gta 5 or something and now gta is getting released now so gta 5 or something where you basically go and bang the car in the video game next day in a traffic jam someone honked at them or something and then someone comes and starts beating at their <laughs> car because of that you know so that's a gta 5 well you have to be conscious you are play whatever you are giving energy to you'll end up getting it back something to be mindful of actually now uh, so the vowel chat vowels are linked with kritika which is very interesting so Uh, dr pai mentioned aditya's name is a sound and so forth so usually these nakshatra natives can have karma with vowels actually or people whose name is beginning with vowels or energies or their creations can be favorable or unfavorable to and favorable to them if they are beginning with vowels depending upon the graha that is placed in there so if you are jupiter in kritika you might see if you create something with vowels there in your in that creation you are more likely to get success if you have saturn in kritika you create something with vowels are more likely to have delays and obstacles unless that saturn is mature and all that and so forth something to be mindful about that's a very simple thing a uh, very simple formula to look into the other uh, thing which i thought was very uh, interesting uh, was that uh, the water aspect so how dr pai mentioned about the water being involved um, with agni soma and all that but in kritika one simple thing you see with many uh, full moon rituals is that one time it is also recommended sometimes to store the water of the full moon in your home so waters of a particular full moon you can capture that water in a jar or something and you keep it in your home that water is going to bring the nourishing energy throughout your um, uh, as long as that water is there in your home so usually people keep ganga jal and all that in the home but you can also do the same thing with waters of a particular full moon full moon and all that that can also help in inviting some energies good energies and all that into your home so that is also one more thing now sometimes mantra charge water can also be kept in the home you chant a lot of mantras to your water like om namah shivaya chant one or eight times that particular water you can just store it in a home temple or something you will see amazing things happen and all that. you do om namah shivaya like one or eight times 40 days that particular water you capture keep it in your home you can see amazing thing, things happen things like that so capturing the water based rituals rituals where you are actually starting the wa- storing the water chanting mantras to a water keeping it in your home all that is very powerful that is also one more thing uh, i would encourage now with water also one unique thing which is uh, which i have been researching into these days is that there is a lot of things going into all this uh, alkaline water and uh, hydrogen water and all that so apparently is a big thing going on big trend going on nowadays with many people drinking hydrogen water to improve their uh, health and so forth so there is a you basically buy a hydrogen machine and you basically hydrogenate hydrogenate the water and the hydrogenated water is what you actually drink supposedly it is improving a lot of people's health something worth you exploring now again i am not a doctor not giving medical advice something to look into on that front 
So hydrogenated water is something I've seen. A lot of people are experiencing a lot of positive results from that. Uh, even with uh, alkaline water. So there is one interesting machine I thought. It, it's called a Skangen, K-A-N-G-E-N. Basically, they make that water more alkaline. Now, again, this is not a full-on solution, something to worth exploring into. Sometimes when you have malefics in Kritika Nakshatra, the water you're drinking is having a problem. You're drinking more tap water. Sometimes the tap water need not be always good for you. Maybe you might have to invest in mineral water. Uh, investing money into that good mineral water might actually be good, be giving you good health, uh, health and all that. It's worthwhile, especially if you're having health problems and so forth, something worthy of considering. So many times they recommend to drink all this water from Lourdes and all that uh, in uh, Europe and all that, which is a considered to be a good thing. Now, a, a different thing uh, which I see here with, uh, um, with Kritika, uh, yeah, of course, uh, Dr. Pai mentioned the, in how Shabrimala and Magravalka happens in which the lamb, uh, they, there's a big flash of light that happens uh, on um, uh, on Magravalka day, which is the, basically the day when sun enters into Capricorn sign. You see that in Shabrimala. In Arunachal and all that, basically there is a ritual in which Arunachal is the fire linga, which is very interesting considering Kartikeya uh, uh, is the god of war and linked with fire and all that. So he's Agni, he's Agni Swarupa and all that. So definitely the, uh, in uh, Arunachala, one of the big rituals, what happens is that, I think it's in Kartik Purnima, if I'm not mistaken, they actually take all the, they have a chariot, uh, they carry it all the way from Arunachala temple to the top of the Arunachala mountain and they light it uh, there at the top, which is something a lot of people, it's a huge thing there and all that. Uh, that fire is uh, fire from the Arunachala hill top is a very very powerful ritual, that kind of thing. Um, powerful event also there in that particular uh, region and before. very having its own energetic significance without a doubt. In fact, uh, Kartikeya is also supposedly Kartikeya is linked with uh, uh, this uh, god Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi supposedly uh, sorry uh, Ramana Maharshi, not god actually. Uh, Marshi Ramana was supposed to be an incarnation of Kartikeya, which is interesting. Now, he was always around Arunachala Hill and all that, which was very interesting to think about also. Uh, one of the interesting stories about uh, uh, Ramana Marshi was that, how like uh, one um, um, how one devotee came to him and suddenly said, look, uh, now usually he would uh, avoid coffee or something like that. He would not drink coffee in his ashram or something. Some story like that was going on. And then so apparently one day one devotee came in and said, uh, one lady came in and gave him like a, this a big coffee thing, a coffee powder and said, look, uh, uh, Rishi, I had a dream. This, this beautiful lady came into my dream and uh, told me my son is not drinking coffee. Could you please uh, make him give this coffee powder which you have <laughs> in your home to this particular Rishi? And then, uh, you know, now then she said, I immediately knew this was Goddess Parvati. That's for this particular uh, the devotee said, and the devotee told this to Ramana Varshi. Ramana Varshi, yeah, yeah, my mother, she always tries to make me drink, just like any mother doing. Any mother, you know, they'll actually make their sons or daughters drink and food and all that, something similar. So usually that kind of karma, the karma over a mother giving you food, a karma around a mother becoming a, a, a mother making you drink milk or mother making you drink uh, tea or coffee or something like that. <laughs> or even a uh, simple a juice or whatnot, right? Things like that. That kind of thing can also be linked there. Also. Very interesting story, but makes perfect sense, uh, you know, in that regard. Now, the other uh, uh, final bits, uh, now, Moon is exalted here in uh, Taurus and in Kritika. Without a doubt, you can claim that there is a hidden blessing from a goddess in this particular nakshatra. Without a doubt, you can claim that. Moon is exalted. Moon is actually linked with goddess energies, actually. So that is also one more thing that can be linked. Moon is actually linked with a motherly goddess energy. That is very important also. So there is a hidden blessing from Parvati Mata or Gauri uh, from in this particular placement. Hidden blessing is there. So when they approach any goddesses, when they approach any female goddesses, mother goddesses especially, they'll get quick results. In fact, the, the best uh, set of goddesses for that is the Saptamatrakas and the Ashtamatrakas actually. Very easily you can see that. So Ashtamatrakas and so forth, when you go to the temples, the Ashtamatrakas then you will see a lot of blessings come for them very easily. In fact, uh, in Kerala, where I'm from, they have a separate system of uh, a Padri for certain temples called as Rurujit Vidhanam, in which the Saptamatrika is always present with this goddess. And so they're considered to be more uh, strong, uh, more fierce and more stronger particular temples, wherever where there are the Ashtamatrikas. Now that I think it's Kritika, Kartika and all that makes perfect sense also, why this particular system or Sampradaya is in place. 
but the uh, going to mother goddesses were, were connecting with uh, female gods and uh, female goddesses uh, connecting with uh, uh, feminine aspects of the of the divine they are more likely to get a lot of blessing and without doubt there's a blessing here now of course if you have a good planet there you are getting a blessing if you have a bad planet there there is a karma there so then you will have to work through that karma to get that blessing that's also one more important thing now the final point which i am well a couple more points i want to make uh, one point was that of um so this shakti which we see which we described in terms of i described certain fire carrying specific shaktis and so forth in terms of the gods and goddesses which certain fires are attracting there's also one more concept in chinese uh, qigong and all that um, in which you have the qi which is the initial thing qi is in, eventually converted to jing and then jing is eventually converted to uh, shen as it's called now supposedly to see shen you would actually see the shen in someone's eyes now qi is the virility qi is basically like the energy the prana energy which you have but the shen is already seen in the person's eyes so it makes you think so a lot of rishis and all that uh, when you look at their eyes you know they carry a lot of energy and so forth you know that so a lot of uh, people are doing spiritual practices in their eyes their shakti becomes very visible that is also one other thing you can see so the shen as a quality and that is definitely coming through the eyes which is the second house of the natural zodiac where moon is getting exalted and so forth so the shakti so many times you can get the initiation through uh even through uh, eyes also certain gurus can also look at you and i should give the initiation that can thing can also be seen so that is also the other aspect so which is very very interesting from that perspective so the eyesight sometimes drishti the good drishti bad drishti kind of thing is there sometimes the good drishti kind of aspects can also be seen from here also uh, from this placement now this is the final point i want to make which is very interesting point krutika's over moon is getting exalted pleiades is here a uh, lot of good stuff is here okay uh, there is also one more point uh, here actually kritika is now if you look at the puranas you have the shiva purana ganesh purana and all that the skanda purana is the biggest of them all there are 20 volumes in skanda purana which is very interesting the skanda purana is actually a big deal actually skanda purana so taurus is the natural second house of the zodiac which is the linked in my opinion link with the puranas the purana is also history the history second house is family your family history is also second house what kind of family you come in what is the history of the family you can identify from the second house similarly with puranas the history of the world can be seen through the kritika nakshatra and the taurus as a rashi as well moon is getting exalted here after all so you can see the uh, usually one of the remedies is to actually read the puranas actually so reading the shiva purana reading the ganesh purana depending upon the graha there you can read the corresponding purana vishnu purana uh, you know malsya purana ketu in uh, taurus and all that ketu in kritika skanda purana you know or any kind of a planet in kritika reading the skanda purana it might be beneficial for you, you know, reading that and following that and understanding and contemplating you know, on those uh, stories can be very very powerful now now for the final point kritika nakshatra is also famously uh, the algol star supposed to be the if there is any star out there which everyone in arabian thing and all that they say it bluntly that is the worst star the star is worst they will create problems uh, you know people will die all that kind of horror story is being mentioned you see all this poisonous story being mentioned with algol star now interestingly algol is also the famously supposed to be the origin point for the name alcohol also so supposedly alcohol the alcohol which you drink is carrying this algol star energy that is at least the name the name thing name linkage between algol and the alcohol shows that now algol star one of the thing they say is that uh, they it create poisons it is a uh, equivalent to like uh, in greek uh, mythology supposedly medusa's head the head whose tears would always create problems everyone would be turned into stone that medusa's head was actually held in algol star now algol star is closer to uh, it's not exactly alcyon and all that but it's close it's in that same vicinity that same part of the sky so that is the same part of the sky where you see uh, perseus holding the uh, i think it's perseus was the name i believe it's perseus uh, he he's holding medusa's head which is the algol star actually so supposedly a lot of poisonous energy is coming from that algol star which is carrying medusa's head and so forth is one of the stories now therefore usually these natives if there is malefics here definitely they can have alcohol ringing problems and all that alcohol problems drug problems and all that they might have to watch out for it now the negative thing now usually the problem here is also with the uh, with the alcohol and now supposedly one interesting thing is that usually 
meditating upon many nakshatras are recommended in terms of getting that nakshatra energy however if you end up meditating on algol star you might be getting problematic nakshatra energy also and so forth. so just be cautious on that front very important the other thing is that um, famously they said that if you if algol is the problem the solution is the perseus star so the perseus constellation which is close to algol is something you can meditate upon to improve the energy that is also one more interesting thing they are actually now uh, different uh, so instead of meditating upon the algol star they are recommend to meditate upon the constellation of perseus which might be beneficial now this a uh, this a uh, important uh, point also let's see so um, wait you discuss this algol star i just wanted to show this yeah good yeah this is pleiades kritika yeah <laughs> this is rohini aldebaran right so algol is somewhere here so right. very close to very close to basically bharni and kritika of course kritika is here this may be bharni so close to bharni and i was thinking about this point of algol yesterday right. and right. like so yeah so around this region so around that region yeah exactly correct so what they say is that not to meditate upon the algol star which is actually linked with the origin of alcohol but, but meditate upon perseus star so somewhere in between actually the stars in between which is supposedly mm. very good actually uh, apparently that can prevent uh, your alcohol drinking tendencies and all that apparently that's what they claim also they claim also something worth while looking at but alcohol of course like, uh, yeah this oh, yeah? looks like an aries uh, bharni uh, so bharni will be somewhere here and then yeah. kritika is here so yeah, ashwini bharni and then kritika interesting uh, like more like alcohol is going towards bharni part in fact interesting yeah yeah okay yeah i think it but was yeah, the... close to that region yeah right so that's one thing cutting so, the course, head you know cutting, cutting the, head. the head on the themes exactly yeah so yeah of course uh, medusa's head had to be cut and all that that's the thing there so so that is also one more thing algol is uh, supposedly not the best thing you see that in most of the astrology but uh, supposedly it's uh, this is also one more thing actually so sometimes they are recommend if you are going for a first date and all that definitely don't go to a bar where they are where they are serving alcohol not a good thing uh, best to go to a coffee shop or somewhere where you can have some good food even if you are going to a restaurant try to go to a place where there is no alcohol around or something is what they say actually if the food is not having any alcohol thing around well hard to see how it might be true used to be that the first dates would happen around temples and all that in india that's what what would at least happen at least the families would meet in temples before they would decide things and so forth but anyway something to think about actually um Now this is what I have uh, to share, uh, uh, Doctor Payanath here on Kritika. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Doctor Pay. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, my no. I think it was uh, a very, very interesting topic that you had brought in on many uh, aspects as well on Kritika. So I think all the audiences are going to really like this part. you also mentioned about algol yes i remember when i was studying about uh, western fixed star systems also in the western system they consider algol to be connected to b heading you know many of the b headings that happened in the the english uh, you know the kings and the queens many of them used to be b headed so you know algol was dreaded to have connection with that so interesting that you this is also as us aditya was saying it falls uh, somewhere very close to bharani nakshatra and then uh, we can also see how ganapati also lost his head you also know vishnu also in one instance where the string of his bow cut off his head and then a horse's head which is haya griva you know so there are so many stories of losing head we are also talking about uh, daksha prajapati losing his head and then getting a a lot of these themes can be connected to the sharp object which is uh, you know so that is all very interesting that we have uh, brought these things up so yeah uh, aditya santip any other uh, final comments before we wrap up uh, today's uh, discussion uh, yes, uh, yes i was just looking yes. and he said about algol uh, you know jeffrey dahmer mm -hmm. i don't know if anyone knows jeffrey yeah, dahmer uh, the the netflix show right it's not netflix show is he's the <laughs> oh, the actual guy the actual, actual murderer guy, yeah oh yeah guy, okay murderer. yeah he was right. a murderer and how right, he used right. to kill people and you know yeah. i think i don't know whether he used to eat also uh, yeah yeah something like that yeah he eats actually yeah. Yeah. 
So this Jeffrey Dahmer was uh, uh, 21st May 1960 born. 21st May. I was just looking his birthday. 21st May is again Sun. Oh, yeah. Checking his chart. Sun and Venus both in Kritika. <laughs> and uh, you can see. I'm not saying that right. the Kritika will be like that. But uh, just, uh, just an example came in my mind. So that's one example of uh, alcohol star. And, um, read about him if anyone wants to know what he used to do and all and kill kill all people, bring bring boys from the uh, bar and he used to have sex with them and then kill them and chop their head and <laughs> preserve it and I don't know what all he used to do. Uh, and not one, not two, many, several. Yeah. That whole, I think, I don't know whether there's a documentary, but yeah, two planets in Kritika. The other thing is, yeah, Dr. Pai, you also mentioned that uh, it's interesting uh, how today we are discussing about uh, about this nakshatra and uh, tomorrow is uh, the, the the winter solstice from tomorrow onwards the light is coming back to the northern hemisphere you know that will start the uttarayana will start the actual uttarayana uh, just in a less than 24 hours from today uh, again the concept of kritika the light you know devayana pitrayana and all those so i think it was supposed to meant to be done today maybe and that's how it works Okay, so that was another one good thing. Um, that's it. I just wanted to share those. Yeah, feel free if you have any. Yeah, no, we are also talking after uh, Skanda Shashti also. Skanda Shashti is interesting. It just happened recently, like a couple of days ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. so we are talking, we ended up talking Kritika. <laughs> we need Skanda's blessing to get this over, you know, so that's uh, also no, no, possible, yeah. The other thing which Dr. Pai mentioned was fusion and fission when he talked about uh, those. So, you know, Kritika, Shanmuga and all fusing together. And, uh, uh, but what is Vishaka? Again, splitting. And I was saying there's some connection between mm. yeah. Kritika and Vishaka. So Vishaka is splitting of branches. Uh, so again, there is something, some relation between the Kritika and the Vishaka Nakshatra coming again and again or something. Is Indra and Indragni in the concept. And what is Oppenheimer? What what is doing? He was also doing the same process of 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 this nuclear fusion, fission, whatever, to pr to produce this uh, atom bomb, yeah, which which he had. So that was again something very significant. Like he was breaking like what we use in atom of uranium, correct? And then the uranium gets, uh, I think, a fission happens there. Fission happens, yeah. That's atom bomb is basically based on nuclear fission. Um, and then it splits apart and then energy comes out and that's what is atomic bomb. Uh, nuclear fusion happens inside the sun, fusion. So that's happening inside the sun. And now the whole scientific community is trying to do nuclear fusion in labs to get basically uh, energy as we get in the sun similarly. It's a much cleaner source, nuclear fusion, not fission, fusion. So that's the whole thing. We are not yet been successful. We hope that we will be successful. We are close to being successful. And if that happens, much cleaner source of energy, much higher yield of energy. And that may solve all of our energy problems when we could make nuclear fusion, control nuclear fusion in the labs, which right now happens inside the sun. Sun can do it, but we have not yet been successful uh, in the lab. So yes, fusion we are able to do and we are exploding everything. <laughs> That's fine. But fusion is, yeah. So yeah maybe another one more interesting point which came to my mind is also i feel this barani kritika energy which is like end of pitrayana nakshatras and starting of uh, the devayana nakshatra which is kritika the starting point and the end point is uh, you know yama's nakshatra barani somehow i feel is a very strong connection with the uh, egypt and the pyramids because you have mummies and you have pyramids which is also the triangles which are being formed. So some connection with the Kritika and Bharani is what I strongly feel with Egyptian, uh, you know, the Pantheon deities, which are also carrying the, what do you call the Ankh, right? They have a kind of an Ankh, which is holding the energy. And you see, usually they are holding certain rods with certain metals to ground that energy that they are creating from the Ankh as well. So you see, most of the Egyptian deities are holding a a kind of a staff or a, you know, a special staff with the Ankh, which is a special object that they're holding. So I think it is all about connecting between the Bharani 
and the Kritika energies, which is also about the mummification and the glorification of death and all of those things, the treasures, the treasure hunters, and afterlife and all of those themes. Yeah, in fact, uh, the in the Egyptian thing, uh, mummy thing, apparently they would uh, find, uh, uh, it's very interesting because the you would actually find like uh, graveyards, like the actual mummy burial tomb, where everything is buried and all that, but the body is missing. <laughs> like you actually find that coffin and all that, but the body is missing. So apparently, one of the things they are saying is that the... Like a lot of Siddhars, for instance, famously Siddhars converted their body to light and all that. What they're saying is that potentially what the after the burial thing, and you see a lot of these scriptures, this uh, symbols and all that in the inside the burial tomb. The bur after the burial, the literally they were able to convert their entire body to light from the coffin or something like that. That kind of thing is very interesting thing actually. So maybe there might be something there actually. So Siddhars of course linked with Kartikeya, huge deal in South India and all that. Potentially something like that might also be happening. It's very interesting. Um, the one one thing I want to add was Kritika is also this diet concept. So usually watch out for the diet. Uh, diet is the food which we eat, but what is also the emotional food we eat? What are the emotions which you are nurturing? Are we focusing on more negative emotions? Are we focus, focusing on more positive emotions? Now uh, in this day and age, is uh, unfortunately more the violent emotions are more easily accessible more positive emotions you know so that's something to watch out for so that's one thing it's interesting because rahu is considered to be exalted in rohini nakshatra but in the entire taurus you see that uh, kritika theme is going on here and moon is also getting exalted it's, it's an interesting thing about so in some uh, parashara believes uh, parasha according to parashara she the rahu exaltation is in uh, taurus but in rohini nakshatra so the emotional diet aspect is one thing which I want to highlight here. Moon is getting exalted here. Are they nourishing more positive emotions? Are they nourishing more negative emotions? <laughs> that seed aspect. So it's very interesting. Dr. Pai mentioned the seed and so forth. That uh, Kartikeya seed, the fire had to be nourished uh, by the Kritika mothers and so forth and all that. So that's a very interesting uh, aspect. So many times with Kritika, we have to be willing to cut uh, out emotions that are no longer serving us. Cut out, uh, you know, in some other cases, people who are no longer connected with us, helping us grow things like that. And of course, cutting is like a normally editor's job. So in, we have to be the editor of our own life and all that. So that kind of thing. Good to do that kind of thing, uh, you know, in general also. But anyway. Maybe I don't know whether Kritika Nakshatra can be good editors. Kritika yeah, excellent editors for sure. Good chance. Very good. Kritika cutting, right? All day long, <laughs> it is a cutting. <laughs> Teams, tailors, I think, people. I think, who's that director? No, who says the cut character in the yeah. movie? <laughs> Oh yeah, all movies cut, cut right. You have to do cut yeah. and bring all that's uh, so naturally. Entertainment is very natural for Kritika Nakshatra. It is a field work. A lot of cutting happens. Editing, movie industry, very easily for these natives. Uh, you know, uh, good chance uh, movie editing skills might be there. Uh, nowadays, YouTube Think, and all that a lot of editing, house, right? No. Yeah. Taurus, Moon, Exiles, Venus, exactly. House. Yeah. Makes sense. Movie, definitely uh, cutting for sure. I never thought of that. I should have checked some charts of uh, directors and producers. <laughs> Maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think even Bharadram once mentioned one remedy for uh, uh, this uh, Andrada. He basically asked one young boy, child to basically, uh, because Andrada is also opposite to Kritika. He basically mentioned that, uh, asked the boy child just to cut one carrot piece and then leave. You know, so when the boy started, just cut one carrot piece and he left. So his studies got improving and all that and so forth. Something interesting. Maybe there is something yeah. else that comes when you just cut our vegetables regularly every day. Something else is going on there, actually. Something is there. Of course, then you can use like all these Damascus steel things and all that for that. Good for that. <laughs> thing, all that. You can buy a Damascus steel chef knife set and all that. That kind of thing can be bought. You can do all that. Yeah. I've seen uh, other thing also with water here. You can use a silver glass to drink water. Very easy way to activate Kritika. Very easy way to activate Exalt moon energies also. I've seen that working also. So, uh, copper glass or silver glass to drink water is very good. Anyways, if you look at that, you can see a difference there. So could be linked with the hydrogenated water, which I mentioned before also. All that is also interesting. But yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Definitely a lot of movie stars for sure. I think one yeah, one point I want to say, Dr. Pai, was that I think India is also Kritika Lagna for a mistake. So maybe India might be having some big thing going on. 
people these natives might have karma with india or something like that uh, you know uh, that kind of thing might happen potentially india of course land of fire rituals <laughs> temples and all that but uh, something might happen there i think when india had the eclipse when um, the second wave of corona was happening eclipse was happening on i think rahu was in kritika or the eclipse was in taurus or something like that when the second it was the worst wave for india and all that so that kind of thing actually it was uh, so some interesting karma is there with uh, india also in that regard maybe as you mentioned the hydrogen might be more in india or something in the future potential for that could also happen but yeah oh yeah I was curious to know whether India is. Uh, I don't. I know it's a Taurus lagna, but I don't know whether it's a Kritika or whether it's a. Yeah, I think it's a uh, Rahu is in Kritika. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Rohini is the lagna akshatra. Could be so. Not sure. Rahu is in Kritika. If I'm not mistaken. Let me. Yeah, I was just checking. Let me check it and see whether what it is. Yeah, but interesting. Yeah, um, definitely Kritika and Ashlesha are the two things. Yeah. check yeah kritika yeah yeah rahu is in definitely kritika ascendant is also kritika it seems okay, okay. yeah so makes sense actually rahu in so both are kritika right because in the recently the new parliament and all that they actually did some murugan thing actually right they put the scepter or something like that if i'm not mistaken yeah Which yeah you see this that. i've yeah. just put 140 1 minute 40 second but something just not to put right. well but still it's it looks like kritika right yeah so maybe india might in some karma with india kind of thing can happen to kritika also because of that mm-hmm. so sometimes if the countries and nakshatras are aligned with your nakshatra maybe you might end up in that country potential for that uh, could be happen so uh, that's why indus valley civilization exactly when <laughs> when bernal equinox was in kritika nakshatra yeah yeah india is known for that correct <laughs> right 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 yeah makes sense But you also see India's birth has happened with the dividing the country, so that is cutting the country into two cutting countries. Cutting the country, exactly. Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Who knows? Maybe in the future it might unite also, right? As you mentioned with Kartika and all that. So who knows? Maybe that might also happen in the future. But uh, and exactly where uh, the Indus Valley civilization is, I think around that area only the cut has happened, right? Interesting. Like Mohenjo Daro and Harappa right. and wherever. I think right. it is almost on the border. Yep. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, so shall we wrap up? Is there anything yeah. else, Sandeep, you wanted to add? No, no, Doctor. By final words by you, actually. Any final words you would like to add? Yeah. No, I think this was great. I mean, we should do more such videos, and uh, I always love to sit and absorb. There is always, no matter how many times you have done these videos, like I said. uh before we get got started every session you sit through them you will learn something new that's true that is that's how the seed concept the seed concept was very interesting to see how uh, how those things you know and indra again the concept of indra and agni coming together yeah new so something yeah. fascinating all the time whenever we see anything you know again uh yeah interesting that also you see that moon gets exalted here we talked about the peacock how krishna also keeps the peacock on his crown to protect him right. as a thing so is a incarnation of we say the avatar which is more closer to the sun which means the you know like rama is sun krishna is moon so yeah a lot of good similarities good to see i think that's what to give us a pathway segue to segue to the next nakshatra rohini krishna yes. krishna nakshatra coming. exactly coming up yes okay thank you everybody for joining in and i really want to thank uh, you know dr aditya togi and dr you know kanoli sandeep krishnan for uh, i mean it was their idea to put this you know i have uh, in one way i want to say i want i want to participate but i want to be more of an observer and i want to see what they have to say but they always uh, rope me into the discussion so but it is always great to sit with you guys and uh, have this we have one member which is missing um, you know yeah we would uh, would uh, love to have uh, eve ji as well as part of this but for those of you i just want to say she has bored out of uh, jyotisha it's not that we don't invite her she has made uh, her own decision not to be doing jyotisha and uh, that is her personal uh, opinion and i mean a choice that she has done 
So we have lost a good, uh, uh, you know, a student because we are all students of Nakshatras. So the four students we are will be missing her, uh, but, her presence. Huh? But again, it's a cut. I know. So, so something with the internet. No, uh, I said it's a uh, Kritika Nakshatra came in and one member got cut. The Kritika exactly. Nakshatra played it. <laughs> exactly. We are left for Kritika. We have come with only three three members. It's like a triangle, you know, from uh, being four members. Anyway, so uh, thanks both of you for joining in. So yeah, Nashkar to everybody.